beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while this need now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed they see it as an opportunity to learn and to re-strategize. Every rich man has failed. They have a, the same destiny as far as failure is concerned. The difference is that they got up, they re-strategized and moved forward. Whereas the failure sat back there. Remember I gave us an example the last time. How that armed robbers can step into a place. Remember the example I gave us. Armed robbers can step in and rob a house. Rob everyone and collect their money and break the window and for one it will be an opportunity for them to change the louvers right and change it from the the one you have to open manually to sliding glasses after two years the man has re-engineered his house whereas the poor man after two years he has all the pictures of the theft and he's still swearing jumping from prayer house to prayer house that the thief must return his speaker it's two years two years the Bible says yeah, I will restore the years that the canker worm, what is my own is my own. And they are arguing whereas the other person has moved forward. See that? Poor people always see challenges as stumbling blocks and obstacles. They hate challenges because challenges expose them to the fact that they are not, there is a need to improve themselves and they hate it because they are unwilling to accept the fact that they need to improve. You see, let me tell you, you are really poor if you are embarrassed by a, a situation that will push you to grow. Poor people love being local champions. They hate challenges. That's why they fight anybody better than them who comes around their vicinity. Have you seen people like that? The moment they are shining and they see somebody who comes and is more competent, they fight him because the person's competence will reveal a weakness in them. But great people associate themselves with those who challenge them. The Bible says to provoke one another unto godliness. If you are the best among your circle of friends, it's a sign that you are a serious local champion. Nobody is inspiring you. Remember, I told us, I don't know if he was here or in one of the meetings. If this is a class and we write a test over 100 and the highest gets 14, was he the highest but did he pass and now the person says i'm receiving speech and price because i'm the highest what did you get 14 and then he takes that same result to write y and, and get f and says no it's not fair i used to be the highest in my school that's not the issue what was the standard are you seeing that now so you can compare yourself with mediocres and because you are the best among them you think the gates of prosperity will just open? No, sir. It doesn't happen that way. There is a cutoff point in life that you must cross for this money to enter your hand. Right? Now the formula for wealth. Remember the formula. I told you this is the grand formula for wealth. Pastors don't teach it because most of them don't know it. 
they think that the reason why they are prosperous is because they are preaching the gospel we establish that 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 is an incomplete truth is a lie no pastor is prospering just because he's preaching the gospel it's not true any pastor that tells you that is simply because he doesn't know why he's prospering it is not because you are a preacher that you are prospering and at the same time it's not because you are a preacher that you are poor let me use the opportunity and balance this how many ladies have been praying that a man of god does not come close to them because men of god have been associated the moment you say you're a poor person they say you went to school to read all of this just to be a pastor as if it's a course and people say ah may god that sent you go with you and the lady who is going with you i pray for you you see all those kinds of pity what <laughs> What gave us this wicked mindset? If you come and say, Daddy, a pilot asked me, I say, are you joking? What did you tell him? Say, I'm thinking about it. Say, are you crazy? Go answer him and let's change our story. But the moment you say a pastor, say, ah, pastor. What did you tell him? I said, yes. I we have, you see that is a mindset. And that mindset has made many pastors to try to be rich anyhow to prove to the parents that when I married your daughter it was Gary you gave me your house but come and see what God has done you never get rich just because you are a preacher you get rich because of what the formula that I taught you and this is the formula that the amount of money we receive your wealth or your income will always be in exact proportion to three things number one the demand or the need for what you do your ability to do it and the difficulty in replacing you this is the formula for wealth oh beautiful okay so it's there the amount of money you receive your wealth or your income will what always don't forget always be in exact proportion to the demand or the need for what you do this is why pastors are rich because what they are teaching there is a need for it are you seeing that your ability to do what you do is not just a demand for it alone that you have skill and proficiency enough to do it well and then number three the difficulty in replacing you the degree to which is difficult to find somebody like you doing the same thing brothers and sisters hear me this is the exact formula it will work for anybody, any day, anywhere. It's a principle. Unfortunately, preachers just tell you, tithe and sow a seed and go and sit back and watch what God will do. Then favor will come. But because you do not understand, you will come and testify. Praise the Lord. I gave tithe or I dropped a seed in miracle service. And now somebody brought one million. The question is, will you remain a millionaire after three years? Two weeks after that testimony, you, your mind takes you where you were before you drop the seed. Say, I refuse to be poor. Shout it, I refuse to be poor. I make up my mind to be wealthy. See, what I'm going to show you tonight, if you remain poor after this series, you were not fair to yourself. I'm being very sincere with you. When I show you what you are about to learn tonight, see, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, don't trivialize what you are hearing now. People pay millions of naira to hear half of what you are hearing. I have a responsibility over us to make sure that we hear the truth. I got a testimony that there's a pastor who is in oil and gas. He's a living faith pastor. And he stumbled across the wealthy place, part two, just the part two. And I heard that when he listened to it, he was looking for all his friends and business associates and giving them and say, I've been a businessman and I have never had this. This is somebody into oil and gas. He said it changed his mind completely. And now you are here seated and you're just nodding. Many of our parents, if they had one tenth of what I'm telling you, I promise you they would have been billionaires. See, this, this thing is... is is so magical that no matter how dull is not left to your personal intelligence at all this is this is the thing that makes wealth a great blessing if it was just a product of 
the y the x intellect some people will be disadvantaged but it was designed in such a way that even the dullest who is obedient will be wealthy is god speaking to us so the amount of money we receive will be in exact proportion to this and we did a little personal evaluation take note of that let's go straight to the teaching of tonight the wealthy place part three i'm on my way on my way on my way to paradise I'm on my way, on my way, on my way to better day. To better day. I'm on my way, on my way. Multiple streams of income, right? Tonight I want to teach you the law that is responsible for activating multiple streams of income. I pray you value it. I pray from the depth of my heart that you value it. I struggled with sharing what I'm about to share today because I was wondering. See, I hate it when personally because I treasure every information and I treasure every revelation that I bring out and um, the greatest reward that I can receive for this is not 1 million, it's not 10 million it's not to say come and take a car or take a house that's, that's not my concern the greatest reward for this series is that we see people experiencing the financial rain in their lives for me this is the greatest consolation. No matter what you buy or sow into my life, it's as irrelevant as whatever. It will really grieve my heart. If after this teaching, your finances does not change, I don't know what to tell you. Again. Praise the Lord. Because this is the very secret of the world's greatest millionaires. Billionaires. All of them. Every single one of them. If you have ever admired them, this is the key. I've reduced the work for you. All the tens and hundreds of books, seminars, videos, and all kinds of sacrifices has been compressed in a series for you to receive. If you don't act on it, there's no reason why you should blame God. Unfortunately, I know that not all of us will act on it. It's a sad truth. That's why Jesus told the disciples, he said, the poor you will always have with you. Meaning there are people, no matter what they hear, they will not change. And the trouble is those who don't change are the ones who will criticize us. They will get angry because they are not doing anything. And they'll say it's not true. What they've taught is not true. People, if I told you now, all of you, take off your shoes. Put your right finger there's something I'm going to bring out and shake. Many of you say, my, my story will change because you like things that don't commit you. You see why we like fetish things? Africa for that matter. They say, turn around and slap something three times. They go, it's done. The man leaves rejoicing because that spirit of laziness, we hate it. Whenever you tell people it's up to you, they say, no, do it for me. Just do it and give me the result. God will bless you. Unfortunately, life is not like that. We like a wolf. That a wolf mindset has done a lot. We like telling people, thank you. Just do it and you say, really? Just for me? Unfortunately, not everything in life is a gift. There are things that are rewards. They will commit you. This is one of them. That's why people like lottery. They like inheritance. It's one word that we love in Africa. Inheritance. He died and left it for me. 
That's why we love that scripture. The wealth of the wicked. Ah, yeah, yeah. Notice I've not touched that scripture. The wealth of the wicked is laid for me. You will grow old. That scripture was written. Wait, hold on. That scripture was written before our forefathers were born. Is that true? That scripture was even written before colonialism. And those who quoted it died without touching the wealth. My Bible says, God gives to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge. And then he gives to the unbeliever to heap and to gather that he may give to the believer. We think that it's just because we are singing praises and tithing. Then Dangote will get up one day and say, um, Shahoma, there is an anointing on me. I don't know what is upon me. Please come. Um, this is my sugar company. It's your own. If that is your idea about the massive kingdom wealth transfer, be delivered now in the name of Jesus Christ. What? What an illusion. You really believe the man will leave his PA, his sons and daughters, wives and concubines, and then just come to you because you think, listen, I know we keep talking a lot. We say in one day, the wealth of Egypt was given to Israel. You don't talk about 40 years when Moses was in the wilderness. You don't talk about Moses' compliance. You don't talk about his repeatedly going to Pharaoh. We see courage. We see audacity. We see character. We see discipline. Right? We see faith. We see patience. You leave all of that one and the only thing you see is that in one night, I've told you preparation takes time. It's manifestation that is instant. We talk about Joseph becoming the prime minister. We forget that a woman lied that he raped her. Do you know what it means to be scandalized on your road to destiny? We forget all that one and we just say in one day, Joseph came up. From the day he helped someone to the day of his reward was two years. The wine presser forgot about him. Yet he was still faithful. He was not offended. They are the ones who have deceived you pastors pastors are the ones who have deceived sincerely and innocently but very wrongly and we must admit it i told you many pastors do not have financial literacy why because all we do is copy and paste i go for a pastor's conference i hear what a man of god i honor says and you see the fact that you are um the wealth of ministers is, is, is a very special case in Nigeria because a man as a pastor may not have financial intelligence and yet be rich because of the way ministry is done. Are you getting the point? He is fulfilling the law although he does not know it, so he is rich. And he thinks the reason why he is rich is just because he is anointed. No, sir. This is the reason. So many people are under pressure. If I must be rich like my daddy or papa, I must be a pastor. Right? So there are so many people who are not called into the fivefold ministry, racing to make sure they start churches in a hope that if I have plenty members, imagine what it will translate to. Let me tell you something funny that someone told me. I think it was a year or two ago. We were somewhere and I paid for something and the person looked at me. He said, man of God, you are the people who enjoy ministry. See all the plenty crowd in Koinonia. You see, you see why he's poor? Because in his mind, he's saying, Abba, everybody prophets of everybody gives you ten ten thousand or one one thousand you see that on koinonia database there are about six thousand five hundred people multiply that one times even one one this is how poor people think they just say kai apostle tell us the truth you are enjoying see <laughs> if that's what you are thinking how much have you given me how much have you given me your personal seed? No, that's wrong. That's not how you think. That's not the reason why men of God are prosperous. Multiple streams of income. Let's go to the business of the night. Are you blessed? Yes. Genesis chapter 2. So
Genesis 2 verse 10. I want to show you a mystery. May God open your eyes tonight in the name of Jesus. Help us, media. It's possible. Genesis 2 verse 10. Only you are worthy. Everyone read. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and it became what? Four. Next verse. The name of the first was Pishon, that which is that which compassed the whole land of Havila, where there is what? Stop. The Bible says, look at me. From Eden there was one river, and then it said the river parted itself into four streams. And it started telling us that every one of the streams had a particular treasure. In one of it, there was gold. And the Bible says the gold is good. It started listing precious metals and so on and so forth. Are you getting my point now? So, one river parting itself into four streams. A particular man of God said this and I believe so much. The secret to oceanic wealth is having multiple streams of income. A stream can dry, but an ocean never dries. Never dries. An ocean never dries. A little stream can dry. But an ocean will never dry. This from scripture becomes for us a revelation into constructively building a robust, recession-proof financial life. Multiple streams of income. The greatest limitation with the Nigerian economy and the Nigerian citizens generally is the mindset that operates a single stream of income and that single stream of income is usually our job job that job mindset is one of the greatest financial stumbling block in my opinion that's what has stopped many people so an average young man in Nigeria operating under the 6334 system you know completes his secondary education and then goes to the university to study for maybe four five six years or whatever and then may add a master's or whatever it is and the moment he graduates the first thing in his mind now please don't get me wrong just follow me i'm not against job but the first thing is his, in his mind is to be employed it's not his fault it's not her fault the system designed you that way are you getting me so the moment you finish, the first question elderly people ask you is, uh -uh, you are finished now. You say, yes. Say, so where are you working? Not what are you producing? Not are you deploying your potentials? Where are you working? So it trains you to serve. It trains you to work. Now the trouble is this. The average salary of a young graduate or even somebody that is working well in Nigeria ranges within 50 to 100,000. Is that fair enough? That's about the amount, right? <laughs> no matter how careful you are with that money, it cannot fund your vision. Are you getting the point now? A job was never designed to completely fund your assignment. Getting one stream of income or staying on one stream of income is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle. Please listen to me. Operating under one stream of income, I don't care how successful that stream is, is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle. That's the reason why 
many people never have enough now you are working and they think the problem is that their paycheck is just hundred thousand then they now rise to a managerial level where they may be earning about 250 maybe 350 some people never even earn that much and then they find out that things do not change right because of Parkinson's law that your need will rise to meet your level of income the meaning of that is you cannot be earning 300,000 and be eating at mama food is that true so while you were earning 10,000 or 20,000 or 50,000 you can go to a place where you eat food for 70 naira but you cannot be earning 300,000 and go and sit down eating the food for 70,000 naira so your need your your expenses will rise with your level of income you were earning 50,000 and you were able to do something decent with it and then you forgot that you are going to get married you thought your wife was a toy you don't know that she's a human being with a stomach to eat a body to dress and then you had the gods to get her pregnant here comes your twins see that yet hold on whether you call them children or adults financially they are three human beings are you getting me regardless of their level of consumption they will still take something out from you and then you have a dog oh and then you have goats you see we, you don't know that all the once it is a living entity it must consume you have been counting yourself alone are you getting the point now now the trouble is there is nothing called job security job security is an illusion you know what job security is job security means that you are working in a place where um, your your stay can be fairly predictable that you can build a financial life around it because you think that in the next 10 or 15 years you will still be there in the Nigeria of today and in the 21st century the concept of job security does not exist praise the lord everybody say hallelujah say i got a federal government job which one civil defense and you laugh to mean that for the next 20 years i will be there you really think so see that so we find consolation oh i'm working in a bank and all of a sudden you get up one day and your director tells you sorry we are downsizing people and uh, here's the list of those who must go what did I do? So I said, no, 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 you didn't do anything. We really appreciate you. In fact, your services are well needed. Can you leave? I remember somebody who got a job. I think he was with Etisalat or um, Airtel, one of these um, telecommunication companies. He was very happy. At the point he was preparing for his marriage, he prepared based on that budget. Then they now told them they are moving the office to Ibadan or something. And they told them they will share. You either follow them to Ibadan or they will give you 200000 and off you go and he smiled and collected the 300,000 because you see when you are poor you think 200,000 is a lot of money until you collect it and find out that the money to transport your in-laws or to transport yourself you know, <laughs> will finish everything and then you find out that you are I will never forget a few days to his wedding he refused to come to the place where the wedding would take place I had to call him and say where are you said i'm so so pleased i said leave that place right now and come what is all that can't be can't run away just come and trust god mm. that's very true nothing in this world will satisfy this is a part of the song i love jesus you're the cup that will run dry every mundane listen the babylonian system this cosmos the economy of the world was never designed to make you rich it was designed to strangle you to death that's why i like that song he's the cup that will never run jesus you're the cup can you sing just that part one more time jesus you're the cup The wisdom of the word can open you up to a realm. 
it may not happen immediately but as surely as the morning comes after the night it can bring you into the place we call the wealthy place there is such a place here and now hallelujah so the single income stream is one of the things that has destroyed a lot of people why do we need multiple streams of income number one to ensure abundance at all seasons to ensure abundance at all seasons to ensure abundance at all seasons please let me have four people i want to use them to just um, make an illustration three four people let me thank you just stand here guys watch this let's call these guys different streams just stand and face me thank you watch this if this is the first and only stream of income you have let's call this a job right we'll identify what the others are shortly but let's assume this is all you have your job let's even call it a nice place nmpc that's where many of us dream of or shell or chevron or whatever it is you want to call it right watch this this is all you have number one it was never designed to fund your project and number two your salary will only keep coming to the extent to which that corporation keeps functioning it's one thing for you to be employed and it's another thing for your corporation to keep being relevant if you were working in nitel in the 90s you would be happy because nitel was invincible i mean they were the only telecommunication company you would imagine that working in nitel by now you would have been the boss only for you to be fired and sent away because the demand right for as long as there was a demand for their product and their service they had money when there was no demand number two if you were working in night post post office right and you were working as the secretary using the typewriters whether electronic or manual doesn't matter right now we have emails i remember when we used to post letters in fact even with the young people have experienced some dramatic transitions remember when they used to use card you get a card and then you load it 200 500 and you slot it in one big something and you hold it you know and then you are trying to talk and then the card just finishes and it starts beeping only for you to go and buy another one imagine within the last 10 to 20 years the transition that has happened so for you to say job security in terms of working in an organization is a mirage the service that organization provides may be inelastic but then the question is what is the guarantee that they will still need your service how many people do we know seated here listening to me right now many who are following us online how many people do you know started working very well and they were happy they gave tight sincere people and now they've been laid off and they've remained there in their utter frustration five years have turned to ten years 10 years has turned to 15 years and many of us look around and we say daddy i grew up knowing you not to work and they say i've been waiting uh, even last week i submitted my cv and look at this he started that when you were five years now you are 25 for 20 years he's hoping that one day somebody will need his service enough to give him a job one stream the beauty of multiple streams is this watch this the the limitation of one stream is covered up by another stream are you getting what i'm saying now there is no stream of income that is perfect what you can do is to combine streams of income that complement one another so that the lapse of one is covered by the availability of another are, are you getting the point now this is part of the benefits for instance do you know that is one thing for you to get a job but it's another thing for you not to be paid there are workers in some states that have not been paid for how many months almost six months now you notice i'm sorry to say but most of the civil servants in nigeria 
don't pay them for two to four months and they are dead completely dead are you seeing that those who have extra streams of income while they wait for the salary to be paid there's something to fall back on see they can laugh with you and say kai times are hard but it's not true they are saying it because you will insult them if they say times are not hard they are identifying with that poverty mindset so they say it's true times are hard but the truth is they are they are, they are on heaven they are in heaven heaven on earth you see that so you find out that this person is here god forbid his car is stolen his salary alone was designed to take care of the family but because there is another stream in two or three months he has bought another car for some for somebody who collected he was loan from the bank and he bought a car of 2.5 million you have not finished paying the loan and they've stolen the car you know you are finished whether you are to go for work or not you must go because if not for anything that loan must be paid out of the 2.5 you've paid only maybe 90,000 or 130,000 you know that you are, the journey is still far you cannot afford to quit your job no matter how sick you are so you see people angrily dragging themselves in the morning that's why they vent the anger on you they get up and look at you one two three four five six children now the seventh one has come there is a loan of nine million to pay in the bank they now cut our salary from 200,000 to 150 and the man is saying where is my life going see every man you have seen was not like that every man you have seen who is angry beating his wife I can tell you if that's how he toasted the woman she would have told him no something made them happy notice men from 50 years and above that's why people don't even remember father's day because all we remember about fathers is they are cruel and wicked it's not their fault it's the inability to learn what i'm teaching you and if you don't learn it i guarantee you in the name of the lord you are on the way to becoming exactly like that absolutely in fact it will be harder because the 21st century living in the 21st century right now is a lot more difficult and complex right well if you factor in terrorism if you factor in wickedness by people put in all these factors humanly speaking that living in the 21st century is living in a challenging time your advantage is in the fact that you have many streams so you are an ocean receiving from many streams if one stream dries up there is another that can complement while you're working on that one then there is another there is no millionaire i know except wicked and godless and corrupt and wicked people except those ones but there is nobody who is a millionaire and a billionaire and trust me i've met a number of them in my life none of them operates under one stream is poor and average people civil servants that operate on one stream of income you calculate everything what the father and the mother is getting for some it's not even up to hundred thousand and yet the school fees of one child is seventy five thousand or fifty thousand or even thirty thousand why would the man not be angry do you know how many angry people are in Nigeria have you seen them lately you stand outside tomorrow morning and just watch just get a chair and sit down and watch people angry somebody will be moving and just kick something oh and he just stress don't laugh oh i'm i'm very serious about what i'm saying you are laughing now because somebody is giving you money all the time by the end of this year they will tell you you have come of age and uh, we have seen how god has helped you thus far from now henceforth you are on your own that's when it will dawn on you you will go back to your notes and start reading everything that i've said i saw this happen to my father i saw this happen in my very family i saw this happen to many pastors sincere people very honest people this has happened to many ministries there are many beggarly ministries this has led people into witchcraft it has led people into corruption get the implication of this it has led people into 419 it has led people into all kinds of things 
whenever they catch armed robbers or they catch prostitutes look at our ladies many ladies have gone into prostitution do you know that i i saw a shocking statistics that i think is it about 40 percent of the firstborn in many families are not the product of the husband and the wife when we get to heaven there's going to be a lot of confession very funny statistics multiple streams of income is the key to surviving financially in the 21st century activating multiple streams of income hear me brothers and sisters is the key to surviving the vicious tide the vicious tide of economic hardship because it will happen you have not seen recession yet more will come it's in your bible right talking about the heavens over people becoming like brass and their earth becoming like iron it will happen you can't stop it you can only exempt yourself i choose to exempt myself so i rather pay the price now and exempt myself hallelujah bless you guys thank you so the limitation of one stream is covered by the availability of another now watch this i want to teach you something about the benefit of multiple streams of income write two words down one cash flow please quickly let's save time we have to finish and um, what we have one cash flow number two write capital projects one cash flow two capital projects you are not listen you are not truly financially free if there is no structure around your life to deal with these things watch this cash flow talks of the money that keeps coming consistently to be able to meet your immediate needs and your expenditure is that true capital projects or the money the income for capital project talks about the resource the financial resources that you will need for all the capital projects you have building you know school fees of your children and and all of that savings and so on and so forth now watch this our parents were taught so much about long-term projects so they bought land right they have cattle they have goats they have a lot of things that can meet long-term projects but they did not make arrangements for cash flow so you can see a man that owns 10 houses but he cannot produce 10 naira to take his child to the hospital under emergency you will think the man is stingy because you that's how many of our parents many of us now think our parents are giving some other people money they may not necessarily be doing that they are just financially illiterate and they are suffering the consequence for it so they do not they didn't prepare for today they were focusing so much on tomorrow they forgot that it's until you are alive today that you can meet tomorrow are you getting that now so they forgot that there will be needs how many houses have you gone to that you know the people are rich and sincerely they cannot bring out 1000 naira to go and buy chicken somewhere and just come and prepare it because the man is broke he may say i don't have money you think he's joking but truly truly there is nothing that's a poor financial life yet he has land right yes he has resources who owns this container he's the person who owns this coca-cola depot he's the person but there's no provision for this now the trouble is in a bit to remedy that the younger generation our generation has focused entirely on cash flow to get money to always be in your pocket and we're forgotten about tomorrow you see the mistake so i need money now i want to buy the watch of twenty thousand now i want to buy the trouser now so you see somebody and say man this guy is rich the watch of twenty thousand shoe of 15 or twenty thousand you are wearing a suit of this you calculate everything on him and he's standing he's wearing two hundred thousand and you are beguiled to think he's very rich still everything he's wearing and he becomes a beggar instantly because he's not preparing for tomorrow are you getting what i'm saying so financial literacy is the ability to keep that balance 
such that you can eat today you can live well today and then at the same time prepare for tomorrow there are many of our parents you will start enjoying their money when they are eight years at eight years the project they started 20 years will now come to fruition but at that time they are too old they can't do anything they will die and leave it for uncles who will swear that they will charm you if you don't leave that money alone and you will quietly just leave are you seeing that now and then we the younger generation are so obsessed i'm amazed to see the way our generation is so obsessed about producing instant results watch people that graduate everybody wants to show i'm working i now bought a car a bmw and um, i don't i no longer use the road i now fly i fly i fly around i'm flying to this place i'm flying to that place and then you carry your phone and say this is this is iphone iphone what iphone 6 have you seen the speed of the internet and so on and so forth and then we use this to lie to ourselves that it means we are rich that's why every rich man will look at every small boy just behaving and nod his head and say this guy is about to regret it unfortunately most of our sisters have been trained to identify those kind of people and define them as being rich so you come back and say is that brother that asked me and they say which one the poor one or the rich one and then you say the rich one meaning the one that held that phone the one that the, the watch or the shoes and all this were glittering you are you will be in big error because if you neglect today you will die today and never meet tomorrow and if you concentrate just on today you will enjoy today if you wear the cloth you should wear tomorrow today you walk naked tomorrow if you eat the food you should eat tomorrow today get set for hunger are you getting what i'm saying so my goal in the teaching tonight is to be able to help you structure your financial life such that you will be able to at least have something to live by and then prepare greatly for the future praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus for wisdom the key to activating multiple streams of income write this down you do not activate the stream just by blindly starting up many businesses now i listen to business people a lot and i've had the privilege to be and speak in a few conferences but the problem here watch this for many people the danger huh, is that they just tell you go and start up a business aside from your job do something else that teaching is very sincere but misleading if you have received that teaching i want you to throw it away now and listen to what i'm about to teach you because for many people that's that's the circumference of your business seminar are you getting blessed so they've told you together with the job start something anything just start no sir you will start and fail and fail woefully write this down god's system for activating your streams of income i want to teach you the kingdom system there is a babylonian system of establishing multiple streams of income that ends you in frustration ends you in penury or you will be rich but at the expense of your salvation you will be rich but at the expense of very important things in your life everything that we do we must do it from the perspective of the kingdom and this is where men of god must balance i believe in in reaching out to business and getting a lot of business people and their ideas but please hear me you must be careful not everything taught in the business world should just be lifted and brought to church hook line and sinker many men of god go for a lot of secular business meetings and they teach them a lot of things and they are motivated I've, I've listened to all those people to trust me but you must sustain a kingdom paradigm to be able to edit out the things that are not consistent with the way of the lord because anything that is not founded on the truth of god's word i don't care what it is it will not last or even if it produces result for you it will take something else out of your life it is the blessing of the lord that make it rich and will not add sorrow to it say amen so what is God's system for activating the streams of income? Let's hurry up. Proverbs chapter 2. 
book of Proverbs, very quickly. Eighteen verse sixteen, quickly. It's a popular scripture we always talk about, but from here we'll rush so that we'll finish on time. What I'm about to bring before you is a powerful revelation that will change your life. Proverbs 18 verse 16. Let's read on. It says, A man's gift. Please listen. Please pay attention. A man's gift does what? Does two things. What's number one? It makes room for him. Is that true? What's number two? It brings him before a man's gift does two things for him. It gives him opportunity and it gives him access. Write it down. Your gift does two things for you that is very vital in producing finances in your life. It gives you opportunities and then it gives you access. Access. Entrance before the great. A man's gift So how do you identify the streams of income in your life? Many people have been taught. They, so they teach you different businesses. And they tell you just do this, this. No, 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 no. no. There's no guarantee that because they gave you a good business idea, you will succeed. You see the mistake. This is where we mess up and we mislead people a lot. Write this down. You identify the streams in your life by looking at two things. Number one, your gifts and abilities. Your gifts and abilities are pointers to the kinds of streams that God has granted you access to. Your gifts and your abilities. Write it down. Number two, the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion. The problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion. These are the two scriptural ways of identifying the streams that God puts in your life. One, your gifts and your abilities. Two, the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion. Not just any problem. You know they tell people, search for problems. There are problems all around Nigeria. You go and try a problem that you don't have passion for. And that's when you know that problems are not things you just solve overnight. It must be in line with your passion. Passion is the key that sustains you in a place. It is passion that puts you back up when you fail. Anytime you commit yourself to anything you are not passionate about, you waste your time, you waste energy, you waste resources. Is God helping us? Write this down. Every gift and ability you have is a potential stream of income. How true? Every gift and ability in your life is a potential stream of income. Every gift and every ability you have is a potential stream. Look at David for instance. Almost every gift the Bible identifies in David later became a stream for him. His ability to play, right? His ability to be faithful in service. His leadership skill. Everything was utilized in his life. I'm about to make a statement that is very striking. Maybe controversial. Especially for pastors. I want you to listen to me. Do not let men box you into one stream. And stop you from exploring other streams. Don't get into that illusion of making people box you because they identify and they know you as functioning in one stream if you are not careful people can put you in a box they know you as a pastor and you remain a pastor and die a pastor there are other streams crying for expression but the religious environment keeps people down and keeps people poor there's a lot that I want to say here 
how many times have many pastors with great entrepreneurial potentials with great leadership potentials there are other streams of income that can find expression but they are boxed to the pulpit and left there why because people say you are a pastor and the meaning of that is remain there be poor there and die there this kind of mentality does not longer exist in the 21st century you cannot live in the 21st century with this mindset again or i am a civil servant so when you call people you say those who are civil servants this side and you see a mass of people like this coming to this side those who are businessmen this side that thing is about to change in the 21st century that concept of choosing whether you are a civil servant or choosing whether you are an entrepreneur are you getting my point there must be a weaving of it to survive the vicious financial circle in the 21st century are you getting blessed is god helping you there are many pastors i say this with a particular bias for pastors because we have said pastors are wicked people because pastors have been caught in all kinds of financial scandals in church eating god's money pastors have been found manipulating people and doing all sorts of things and the reason is because they have to respond to the necessary frustration that comes by having a single stream of income now the man is a pastor and is earning twenty thousand with five children right you can imagine what that is that you give a pastor a house and one car does not mean he will not need money again and they themselves have not been educated they have not been taught they lack financial literacy are you getting the point now so the pastor has to necessarily keep preaching messages that will manipulate people into because he's the pastor's children must go to school is that not true the pastor must also eat some of you after the service you go to the pastor's house 10 people immediately after after service and all of them deserve to be fed This has brought a lot of problems for people, especially those in ministry. Listen to me. Every potential you have that God put in you is crying for expression and you should never go back to the Lord without giving it expression. Every gift in you. I plan in my life that every gifting and every potential His Majesty has deposited in my life will be adequately deployed. Praise the Lord. There are so many things. That's why many pastors are poor. That's why they are broke. One of my greatest mentors, Dr. Miles Munro, a man who was able to cut across both the secular and the contemporary society, utilized his potentials. As a pastor, he was the senior pastor and the founder of Bahamas Faith Ministry International. And yet, at the same time, brothers and sisters, he was a consultant for 16 presidents. How many? a consultant an advisor to 16 presidents at the same time he was so notable the bahamian nation had to make him an ambassador imagine that and then at the at the same time he owned an aircraft company not aircraft they are busy shouting that people are buying jet many of you may not know let me explain it to you what it means it, he he not own one aircraft Boeing 737 and no 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 he owned a fleet of aircraft the very company that deals in it and yet he was a kingdom man he lived well on earth and is gloriously honored in heaven that's why he was a man of integrity he was not just a man of integrity because he said there was absolutely no need why will you steal church money for what how much is the money are you getting the point i tell you the truth not exposing people to the different giftings in their lives to deploy it and then leaving them say it's like you are hungry you fasted for three days and then they make hot food nice food rise up on steaming right and then one drink is in front of you and they say just keep your nose and be staring at it but don't touch it that's the same frustration that happens to a pastor that you live with millions in a church account and he's sitting down and his son he cannot pay thirty thousand. they must be thieves necessarily with time even if their conviction at you see that 
don't trivialize what I'm sharing with you. That's the reason why many, many pastors cannot be bold in teaching the truth. Because they have inconvenienced too many people. And God is helping us tonight. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I am gifted. Shout it in the name of Jesus. There is a gift upon my life. There are graces upon my life. There are abilities upon my life. And I will deploy every one of them to become a stream of income. Even if God tells me to drop ministry today, I will never be poor for the rest of my life because there are other streams. Are you getting me? Before God called me, I was doing something. Is that not true? You see, many of us act as if, oh, God found people lazy. Go and read your Bible. Everybody God called into ministry, he called from. He called them from a standpoint of diligently doing something. Moses was standing his father-in-law's sheep. Is that true? Every single one. Peter, they were all fishermen. God does not call lazy people. Please don't make it look like being in ministry is a license unto laziness. There are too many things I can do with my life to bring me stream of income. If I'm not a preacher, at least I can speak. Right? There are so many things. There are books to write. I have different thoughts on different areas. I can document my persuasions. There are all kinds of financial and business vehicles to set up. So don't you see a man of God rich and just think it's church money or just think and think hey, are people not dashing their money. You see articles blackmailing men of God all around and saying a man who was poor but now he has as though he's not supposed to be blessed. People are arguing and complaining about one jet, two jets. My goodness, I don't know what will happen by the time we come. If we need 100 jets, we will buy all of them. I guarantee you. Very unapologetically. See that? You can be rich through the dignity of kingdom integrity. It doesn't have to be by crooks. It doesn't have to be by pranks. And you don't have to be angry at wealthy people. They look like you. You're of equal age, but your mindsets are not the same. Your sacrifices are not the same. Your courage is not at the same level. Hallelujah. Never allow anybody keep you in one position and not allow you to deploy your talents. There are many of us who are seated here. Bishop T.D. Jakes, the, the pastor of Potter's house, right? He wrote one book, Woman Thou Art Loose. Just one book. And that book brought him $4 million. Multiply that by 210 Naira thereabout. That gives you the equivalent in Naira because he deployed his writing potentials. It became an added stream of income. When people were insulting him, for living in a house of 2.1 million I said come on give the money break he didn't steal anybody's money why will I be worth 10 million 20 million 100 million and not live in a house how much is 1.2 how much is 2 or 3 million compared to 100 million don't insult people if a man buys a car of 20 million don't insult him and say he's extravagant compared to what you are gauging his success based on your level Compared to what? You see that? These are some of the poisonous mindsets that have destroyed us. We never forget, we forget the fact that these guys are sick. They are tape ministry. The books that they have written enough will feed them for a lifetime. Just the books. Bishop Oyedeko, for instance, I hear that he does not even collect one naira from his books. And there are at least 60 books he has written. How many of them are bestsellers? Yet we, we, are, we are the first to criticize people and run down men of God and run down people because how much is the peanuts you get from congregations compared to the wisdom? See, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask, not let him criticize those who are walking in it.
Alléluia. Ministry for me alone, with all the blessings of ministry, is only one stream of income. There are so many of them in my life that have been developed and others are still being developed. I will never be poor. It's not about being a preacher. It's about realizing that once there is a demand for what I do and I train myself in the ability to see, to do it. When you are sleeping, the wealthy people are awake, studying seminars, doing a lot of things, right? And then we see them rich and we criticize them. Please, I want to say this koinonia from today. Never develop the attitude of criticizing wealthy people again. You will never be like what you resent. Anything you drive away from your life, you can never be like it. Honor is the seed for access. Hallelujah. I'm friends to many, by the grace of God, many wealthy people and many millionaires. I'm not so daft to be around people who are blessed and not ask questions. See that this is very important but then let me let me quickly balance something because there are so many people who will be hearing now I explained to us that there are all kinds of streams of income watch this the trouble I have especially with men of God in business and other things is that they do not know how to draw the line between the different fragments and facets of their lives. Are you seeing that now? When Jesus entered the temple, what did he do? He took a whip and he was flogging those who were doing business in the church. In the church. Jesus showed us that there is a difference. As a man of God, I have my corporate life. I have other dimensions, leadership and all of that. You see that? I cannot come into church and be doing business in the church. No. No, a thousand times no. The moment I do that, I'm taking advantage of the loyalty. Are you getting that? Of the people and using it for my... That's why you never come and hear me talk business in church. No, sir. The Bible says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Right? I cannot bring up a product right now and force everybody in Koinonia to buy it. It is my product, but a lot of men of God are doing it. This is where the balance must come in. You cannot use the vast people that God has given you to train and build and then squeeze into them. No, no. There is a difference between different aspects of your life. That's the reason why God fragmented himself into different aspects. You cannot know Rafa by studying Jaira. Jaira is a dimension itself. Rafa is a dimension itself. Sikenu is a dimension itself. Is that true? El Shaddai is a dimension itself. But all of those names belong to one person. I am. So he said, who do men say that I am? And they were calling different dimensions of him. As a, as a man of God, you are dimensional. While it is true that you do not stay on one place, you must know where the boundary lies. Never carry business into church and go and manipulate people. No, it's wrong. Very wrong. If you are here as a man of God and you are doing it, stop. Stop. You must give people an opportunity to make their decisions. They are not daft. Of course, I understand sometimes because of our kindness and generosity. Do you know why I'm telling you this? Because there are some things I may not be able to share here. But see, the business world is a lot different from ministry. In the business world, you must give people room to take responsibility for themselves. As a man of God, you can ruin your church in one moment. Right? I know there was a situation that happened in, in one church down in Abuja. This is one of the popular churches around. Where there were some people who brought some land to sell. And then they brought it to church and they designed one scheme. And members were happy and all of that. And then somehow the people were dishonest. And they swindled the people with the church. The man almost lost his ministry. Because people started saying our pastor is a thief. He connived with people to eat our money. Do not think because members sit down and love you. They love you as a man of God. 
but you must give them room to build their financial capacities don't over pamper people in the name of kindness they will stab you when they fail because the business world is a world that requires its own maturity are you getting me many people do not have business sense and you expose them in the name of church to businesses or some things when things go wrong or it fails they will kill you they will write articles about you they will lock you up as a man of god and so let people take their responsibilities by themselves are you getting what i'm saying is god giving us wisdom this is a mistake a lot of pastors have made they come to church anybody just comes in and says i'm a lawyer i have some land i am a this i have that and then the pastor comes and announces and because people love the pastor they now run around and come and say this is our pastor this and that and that or they raise money to buy church land you know, all kinds of things please i'm telling us especially for men of god who are here who are upcoming maintain integrity maintain integrity as a man of God, define the jurisdiction of your work to the ministry and stay there. Now, there are other platforms you can create, like Sunday Adelaja, who created a lot of business platforms. If you want to do anything that is business in the church, set up a committee or a club and let people subscribe to it. Spell the terms of it and let the people know that they are venturing into this, not in the name of the church, but at their own risk. That way, whatever happens, the integrity of the church is preserved. Is God teaching us? I told you I struggle to teach you what I'm teaching you because this is what you would teach in a business class that you pay hundreds of thousands. But this is giving us wisdom, especially for those of us who are leaders. Don't carry the zeal of business ideas or whatever and come and project on people. That they are praying in tongues and they hug you. You don't yet know their attitude towards money. They will stab you and kill you. Is God helping us? Let's continue. So your streams of income should be around your giftings, should be around your abilities, your streams of income. Now look up. I want to teach you something, please. Very important now. Write this word down. Time. T-I-M-E. Write this word down, time. Your life on earth is measured in time. Don't forget this. Your life on earth is measured in time. That means whatever you give your time to, you have given part of your life to. The time you are giving your employer or your job, your office, is part of your life you are giving to them. Write this down. Focus on activating streams that increase your income without eating up your time. Focus. There is only limited time you have. Everybody has only 24 hours. You cannot have 25 hours in a day. So if you generate streams of income around your life and all of them require your time and your active participation, you will wear your life out and you will be ineffective. Wealthy people focus on activating streams that increase their income without necessarily eating up their time. Let me give you an instance. If I write a book right now, if I write one book, right, I communicate my thoughts. Maybe books on, there are so many books that I have, I'm just waiting for the Lord to release me to begin to write books. I know many of them will be bestsellers because I will not just get up and write books. I will humble myself and meet those who have produced bestsellers and ask them, I have the content, but what of the marketing? What of the publicity? Never do a thing until you have consulted with the best of the best. You will minimize mistakes. You will make instant progress. So I can write a book right now, for instance and then release it and i can be here preaching and somebody is buying my book in a bookstore doesn't know me has never seen me may never see me right and then income is coming into me 
millions and millions of income coming because I'm documenting my persuasions and there are many areas I can write on I can write on the anointing I can write on wealth and prosperity I can write on leadership all the areas that I know God has granted me grace in I'm just showing you how one stream now I can be here and be effective in koinonia another thing for instance if I build an estate you see that if I build an estate there are people renting I don't even know them I've never seen them for instance but I'm here teaching the word my time is being invested to the principal thing I've been called to do but there are channels that are bringing me in are you getting what I'm saying now very important if I teach assuming that we're selling our teachings imagine the hundreds of millions would have made by now on just the media ministry but God instructed us not to do that the impact is more important than the money one grateful person can bring what would have gotten in 10 years and bring in one day this is the benefit every time you dispense value you must be rewarded whether you sell it or you give it free is a law so we are not at a loss at all now imagine that today's message the media department will now package it the wealthy place volume one volume two volume three right and then maybe each of them is sold now you can imagine that and all of that is happening so people are buying it somewhere whereas you are still here as much as possible value your time your time is premium you must know that you cannot give away your time unnecessarily for everything it's too much to give your life just for money no let wisdom minimize the dispensing of your time so that you will spend that time on the things that matter in life i hate seeing people spending all their time chasing after money you should chase after god chase after god seek ye first the kingdom and seek ye to align yourself to the principles of the kingdom that's what is meant by his righteousness here yeah. and he said all other things will be added let's hurry up when you give your time you give your life never forget that the reason why they pay you salary is because you are exchanging two things for that salary number one you are exchanging your gift or your potential or your your skill number two you are exchanging your time these are the two things that go for your salary you cannot afford to do this for the rest of your life because you're 24 hours if you spend one third or two third of that 24 hours investing in somebody's project and his assignment how much do you have left for yourself and for the advancement of the kingdom imagine that i cannot come for koinonia now and say because i'm trying to do something there i'm looking for money somewhere it's terrible i'm failing in my assignment it doesn't matter how much money i make so you have to be careful so that you don't just that's the language of those we call hustlers Hustlers are those who are ready to commit their time to anything that will give them money. Right? They have, their time is valueless to them. So they can give it away just for anything. My time is precious to me. Because my life is measured in time. God gives me the gift of 24 hours every day. And I focus on doing the things that are consistent with my vision and my assignment. And while it is true that I want to activate streams of income, it will not be at the detriment of my assignment. And so you must structure your life in such a manner that you can activate multiple streams of income and then at the same time conserve your time as much as possible. Praise the Lord. Write this down. There is a, an equation for financial freedom. Financial freedom is equal to financial abundance plus time plus peace of mind. That you have money does not mean you are financially free. Financial freedom is equal to financial abundance, the availability of the resources plus time. There are people who have money but no time. No time to pray, no time to build, no time to spend a quality time with their children and their loved ones and their families. No time at all. They tell you no time. I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. They started doing that when they were 20. Now they are 55. I'm busy, I'm busy. And then they die. Because on the seventh day, God rested. You, you are in the ninth day. You have not rested. You will die. Hallelujah. 
let me tell you the reason why it's so easy to be rich in the 21st century in the school of prosperity especially in the 21st century almost any and everything has a demand there is a demand for almost any and everything this is the reason why there should be no one here seated under the sound of my voice that in the next three years in the next five years should be poor impossible there is a demand for just any and everything the world is a global village there is a demand for just anything see right now even people's laugh has brought them millions somebody just laughs is it not your ringtone oh yes somebody just laughs around and does everything that's side a does another one that side b you see that and you put it as your ringtone and you go and download it and you do a lot of things anything at all anything a lady because she has nice fingers will make millions because she will market the ring of a jewelry company they just keep putting rings on her hand for every ring hundred thousand dollars can you imagine just for having a nice finger there is a demand for anything so you have been playing with that your hand could it be that that's the rod of God just for being fine you can wipe poverty away from your life forever right just for being not fine you can still wipe poverty away from your life because you can be used in both ways it depends on the message that is being communicated um, I'm just I'm speaking generally There is a demand for everything absolutely everything no matter how little the skill is there is a demand for it look at how pastors you may sit down and think that there are already too many pastors allow the glory of God to come upon your life and see how many people will scrounge scrounge after that from today till Wednesday non-stop I have ministrations every day I have a meeting morning and evening you will think there are already enough pastors no no, there are 7.2 billion people right you think there are an, enough people selling pure water or whatever it's because you do not know how many people are on earth when you know there is a demand for anything and I told you the formula once there is a demand there is money for it you go and meet somebody and say borrow me 10 naira." he'll tell you I cannot but sell something he will pay you for it In the 21st century, brothers and sisters, you are only limited by your creativity. You are only limited by your creativity. Ah! There is a mighty financial army that will rise. Even if you don't pay attention to this, I know that there are millions of people who will take this message and will run with it. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain. 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 Write one word down. We're almost done. Creativity. Please write it. This is an important key in the school of prosperity. Creativity. What does it mean to be creative? Creativity is the ability to birth new or improved ideas. Oh, this is key to your life. The ability to birth new or improved ideas. If you lack this one ability, you will never be rich. Because that's the key to being different. That's the key to being unique. It's not just what you do. It's the uniqueness in it. And the key to being unique is hidden in one word. Creativity. 
the first revelation of God in the Bible was not as a savior was as a creator and he created us in that image creativity what we were born to do anyone who has a mind has the capacity to be created your destiny is at the mercy of your creativity this gentleman can produce this 30 minutes of deep intense worship just with instruments and he will pray and fast and train himself and just package something like this he can call it anything the dew of heaven part one millions of these copies will be sold because people will put it in their phones can have a contract with most of the the, 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 the people, iPhones and, and iTunes and all of these people and they can put it, they can even put it by default in many gadgets and is blessing people millions of people are buying it and this guy is getting blessed because there is a demand for everything that's why Don Wen will never be poor I know you gave your life to Christ at his song but he became rich because you bought the thing yes he never sleeps, he never slumbers but you bought it or at least it was given to you there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. 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 Creativity is the key to effectively creating a demand for your gifts or your potentials. The reason why nobody has placed a demand on your gift is because you have not added creativity to it. The reason why your shop looks like that of every other person is because you are not creative about it. Let me tell you, in the world of prosperity, you lose by becoming like every other person. Your uniqueness is what stands you out. Your competitive advantage. There is what you get in Koinonia that you will never get anywhere. It cannot be cloned. There is what you get from my life that you cannot get anywhere. There is what I should get from your life that I cannot get anywhere. This is your key to prosperity. Men will never come to you if there is an alternative to you. They will come to you to the degree to which you are uncommon and unique. I hear the chains of men falling. I hear the chains falling. I will give you four streams of income that can help you. That's, that's all we'll touch for this. Um, there are at least eight. I call them recession-proof streams of income. They are all in the Bible. But I'll give only four here. School of Ministry students will add two more. And then that's about it. Any other one has to be in a business or a corporate platform. Ready? Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2. If we can get NIV, please give us NIV quickly. I hear the chains. Can we get NIV? Okay, fine. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2. Please, let's save time. Will you break every chain? Break every chain. It says, give portions to seven, yea, to eight, for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Right? What other version do I have? It says, it says, I, I can't remember the version now, not, not amplified. It says, invest in seven places, yea, in eight. Um, who has that version? I don't know. One of these new versions. For you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. In other words, scatter 
your streams. Right? That concept of lay your egg in one basket is nonsense. Throw away that theology. Poor people said that. That's why they are poor. When the basket falls, what do you do? You die with it there. Listen. Thank you. God bless you. NLT. It says, but divide your investments among many places. For you do not know what risks might light ahead. I hear the chains. I love the Bible. Hey, yeah. Mm. Number one, land. Land. Everybody write it down. Land. Open bracket. Land and anything you can get under it, on it, and above it. It's all called land. You know it as real estate. Land. Together with anything under it, on it, and above it. Look at me. You are not rich if you do not own land. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Write it so that you don't forget. I don't care what else you have. You are poor if you do not own land. Because land is a fixed asset. It cannot be stolen. Even if a bomb falls on that land, it can only affect what is on it. You will not see a big hole suddenly looking at you. Land is one of the greatest communications of God's justice and mercy upon the inhabitants of the earth. I'll stop there. Land. Two. Education. I'm giving you four fail-proof streams of income. Under education, write the following. Anything, whether speaking, writing, or setting up structures that transfer knowledge. Education is all about imparting knowledge. The Bible gives us a clue into becoming rich. He said, before the coming of Christ, knowledge shall increase. There will be an unsearchable demand for knowledge. That means anything you do that will transfer knowledge to people, is a guaranteed source of wealth. There's nothing to hide. There's no secret about it. There's no secret there in the first place. Education. Speaking. How many people rake in millions of dollars every week just because they are able to communicate. They are not just talking. They are transferring knowledge. Imagine that this was a business meeting and everybody is paying 100,000 for the seminar. Calculate how many people. 100,000 times all the people we have, including all those who are online. And I'm doing the same thing. I don't need to talk louder. I don't need to shout more. The exact same thing. 10 years after I have preached this, or I have said this, or I have delivered this lecture, I will still be getting paid for it education one of the cheapest aspect of education is writing the ability to document your persuasion for as long as you think there is something you want the world to hear you can document it the only problem is what many people call book writing is nonsense they are just hungry people looking for money so there is no excellence and no creativity and at the end of it only 100 copies are sold and the bookstore tells you please get out but there is a key purpose driven life right rick warren that one book brought tens and hundreds of millions of dollars it was so profound they had to create a workbook for it love and respect there are many books that have become bestsellers rediscovering the kingdom because individuals documented strong persuasions that rattled the ideologies of continents could there be a persuasion in your life right now that you need to birth and bring out you are sitting upon a gold mine and yet you are crying crying for food and crying for water the only limitation to your life should be the voice of God not lack of creativity it's God speaking to us. Education. Number three. 
your job your job paid employment it's a stream of income so your job is not bad you can get a job at least you receive salary from it and the beautiful part of that is that your salary can solve your short-term needs because you know every month a fixed income is coming so it can give you room to focus on other things that will take time to build how many have I given uh, let's stop at the last one transportation the only reason why oil and gas is useful is because there are human beings that need to move around we love oil and gas but we hate transportation how unwise I know that the resources are also used for a lot of things but did you know that for as long as there are human beings on earth there must be movement you studied something that was a clue to your prosperity but you forgot remember what we I think it was in biology social studies Mr. Niger huh? biology Mr. Niger movement as part of the quality of living things is that not true that was the key to your wealth that you have been neglecting every day immediately after koinonia now listen every week i don't know how okay i have an idea you cannot imagine how much is given to the transport companies that transport people without fail every week is that not true transportation if they were your bosses it would have been your money are you getting what i'm saying how many people have had 300,000, 400,000, and then they used it to buy two phones? Foolish person. Whereas the phone is not bringing you anything. There are sometimes in that big phone, only 300 naira will be there. And you can't make any call. You cannot even browse. Whereas you would have been able to buy even if it was a small golf. These are the kinds of businesses that you don't even need to know how to drive. Right? The, 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 the driver that carries me around he started driving me three years ago and within that three years he has bought two extra cars two extra cars and I tell you a large percentage of that was for my money think about that they are always happy they, you never see them frowning they are smiling because every time he sees me he sees his destiny and for as long as I need his services, I will keep paying for it. How many of you are sitting on millions, hundreds of thousands, roaming around, whereas, or trying to get rooms and apartments to prove a point that does not have to be proved? You want to show people, now you live in a three-bedroom flat that is empty, with one small mattress in one of the rooms, and people think you are a big boy. You are not big, you are small whereas something would have been bringing you income let me tell you something the transport sector is a mysterious sector people have never studied it's a sector that starts bringing you money instantly from the first day the car goes out by evening money is coming 5 a.m in the morning brothers and sisters there are people who get up begging whether it is town service whether it is wherever I know someone who bought kekena pep right he just bought one i think second year or something like that and then when he bought that kekena pep i think about 12 12 000 comes in every week Twelve thousand. he just went and registered it with the association national union those their union and then he's around praising the lord and giving tight every week and you are saying this guy is he a thief or no 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 do you have to be smart to do that not necessary you just have to be poor. And that's why I told you there is no reason, brothers and sisters, for people to be poor. What's wrong with five people coming together? You all have 50, 50,000. Have a very well-defined term. You don't need to wait till you have one million. What's wrong with three or four people coming together? All of them having 100,000. And you buy a golf. In four, five months, you are broken even. And you can buy another one. And then buy another one. While that is happening, you are busy increasing your financial intelligence. How much have you spent from January to this year to, to now? Some of you, millions. Look at how many of our parents are sitting down and getting angry at people. How many times did they pay them arrears of millions? What did they do with it? They went to a club 
and called friends and blew the money. They blew one golf away in one night to prove that their arrears has arrived. And yet we keep blaming God. But tonight God is giving somebody intelligence. You don't need to register any company. You don't need to know anybody. With an average car or an average golf, at least 3,000 is coming for you every day. This is the minimum. In seven days, it's 21,000 for doing nothing. You don't need to go to school. You don't need to know. But there are many people sitting on you. And when you see blessed people, you think they are arrogant. They are not. They are not. The income that comes to your hand is in direct proportion to the demand. Demand. The transport sector. There are many people dreaming, I will go into oil and gas. I will go into oil and gas. How much do you know it takes to start oil and gas? You want to be a thief? Can't you start gradually? How many people are sitting on 5 million, 10 million that are waiting to buy oil blocks of billions? You have eaten your own prosperity by yourself. How many people have started popcorn? Popcorn inside ABU. Is that not true? Popcorn. I'll never forget years ago when one of, I think that was in 2006 or seven. I wanted to start one popcorn machine, popcorn business in New Bamadi, and I wanted somebody to manage for me. So I needed to, I sent him to go and do a research for me on everything. I was surprised when the, the owner of the popcorn said he makes 5,000 naira every day. Every day you are eating, you bought it 30 naira, but many just like you are paying for it. And he said during orientation and uh, uh, what do we call it, graduation matric, it can skyrocket to as much as 15,000, 20,000. There is no single ice cream machine in Zaria. Not that all those ones that uh, they, they put the thing as if it's tough. I'm talking of real, a standard. Look at this. There are many of you sitting down. What's wrong with 10 people who come in with creativity? About 250,000 will buy that thing and go and open up something. I guarantee you, in one month, you will make your money back. That's how desperate it is. Um, I like ice cream like what? There's a place in Abuja. Every time they see me, they're happy because they, my money will finish there. I can't make it, so I must pay for it. Whatever you cannot do for yourself, be sure to pay for it. If you ever get it free, someone paid for it. Who is God speaking to tonight? I'm showing you streams. I'm a student. I'm young. Very soon, you'll find out that the difference between you and graduation is one example. Just one. And you come out and say, it's a lie. Maybe you say, get out of here. You are finished. Go, 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 go. Why should you be poor when there is such a demand? A de there are, look, let me tell you something. If you have 20, 20 of any of the things I mentioned, there will still not be enough demand. How many saloons are in Italy? There are about 40,000 students. 40,000 students or more and about 60% of those people are ladies count the number of saloons you have in your campus are they up to 10? I doubt if they are up to 10 servicing at least 10 or 20,000 people if you have 1,000 more of those things it will still not be enough and yet we criticize those who are producing because we have been, we have been wired to consume that's all we do. Those who produce are the ones who are there. Many of us are, are going into food. Question. If we don't buy the food, why don't you get into businesses that do not need refrigeration and all of these things? I, I don't know about you, but I don't like things that give me heart attack. You see that? That's why I hate businesses that have to do with many people. One person's fight with his wife will affect my diligence. I don't like that. I like to be responsible. I like to be responsible for my, my diligence or otherwise. I can't let another person's carelessness cancel everything I've done. No. If I do well, let me be commended. If I do bad, that's why all those kind of things, shipping vegetable from here to Port Harcourt, I will get into those kind of things. You can do that, but no way. So if the man is drunk on the way, 
I suffer because of his drunkenness. I don't like those kinds of business. This is me personally. You have been sitting on a gold mine wishing that things will change. But God is speaking to you. Especially for those of us who are working. You are earning your 50, 50,000. Why don't you close your eyes and be determined that for the next six months you are going to save. Let me tell you something. Write it down. Never borrow money as much as possible or don't borrow money as much as much as possible this is a difficult thing i know i'm human trust me it's a very difficult thing but i want you to make a vow today with your life that as much as god grants you the grace you will never borrow money the borrower is slave to the lender say it after me Borrowing will put you in slavery forever. You can be addicted to borrowing. Borrowing is like drugs. Because it comes easy. When you borrow five naira, you will borrow 100,000. You will borrow five million. Until you find out that you are in debt of 500 million. And you cannot know where it came from because of borrowing. A borrower. Some of you as you are sitting down right now. Not just from anything. Maybe business failure or whatever your own personal debt that you have eaten everything you are wearing and the room you are staying off key you borrowed money for it you are smiling but there is a pile of debt that is growing and you are borrowing to keep servicing it you will be a slave forever it is one of the babylonian system that's why you notice i never talked about borrowing i'm sorry i know that this insults a lot of your business book, but i don't believe it in business we teach that there's good debt and there's bad debt you use good debt as a leverage you use bad debt for consumption no debt is the kingdom's way no debt say it shout it again after hearing all that i've told you today you can choose to be emotional about what i've said and get up and return back like someone returning back to his vomit or you can make up your mind and say this is it i've come to the end of myself lord i'm ready to begin to take decisions listen the key to producing anything in life is to adjust the most predictable thing in life is change change is the most predictable thing whether you participate in it or not it must happen there are two kinds of people there are victims of change and there are initiators of change whether or not you want things to change it must change listen a time will come all your friends will rise and leave you if you don't change you will either be a victim of the change or a benefactor and an initiator in nigeria many people are the recipients of change the wealthy people are the initiators of it i choose to be in that category i refuse to just be a benefactor of change or just a, a a victim whatever happens i ride with it no sir we are going to pray rise up on your feet psalm 66 please psalm 66 verse 12 psalm 66 verse 12 media can you help us please psalm 66 please everybody rise this is a very serious moment right now it's a defining moment for many of us. Everyone read. One to read. It says we went through fire. We went through water. We went through times of hardship and turbulence. But by your wisdom, you have brought us into a wealthy place. I announce to you, Koinonia, there is a place called the wealthy place. There is a place. It's a place of plenty. It's a land of abundance. And it is absolutely left to you. I read you a scripture that the profit of the earth is for all. Take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, 
take over I have touched the end of myself Hallelujah, hallelujah I have come to the end of myself Hallelujah, hallelujah I have come to the end of Sing it from your heart Take over, take over I have come to the end of myself Take over, I have touched the end of myself Hallelujah, hallelujah I have come to the end of myself I still remember it as clear as yesterday. The night, 2004, lying down in my room at Area BZ, I remember getting up and making a vow. I said, Lord, this is it. If this is what it takes to be blessed, then I insist that I must be blessed. I read my Munro's books discovering your potential just that one book please hear me and i made a vow i told myself i know that it will not happen overnight but no matter how slow i am willing to pay the price i told myself even if i have to leap into the wealthy place i'm going there i made up my mind i said i'm tired i made up my mind that my children will never get up to see a cruel and wicked father because of prosperity. I made up my mind that I will never teach error in ministry because I'm looking for money. I made up my mind that I will never soil my hands into witchcraft or anything, the, the kind of money that will take me to hell. No. And for me to live in integrity, I knew that I would pay the price. I cry to the God of Israel. I remember it as clear as I'm looking at you. Tears were running down my eyes. And I said, oh God, I pray that you will help me. I pray that you will do something remarkable in my life. I continued like that, but nothing really happened. Watch this. We're about to round up. I want to challenge you. 2007 was when I signed out of poverty forever. Experientially, never to return there. Haven't done everything I did. I remember it was a Christ Embassy Church in Port Harcourt. That night, it was Reverend Owase, Evangelist Owase. And they had challenged people to sow and to do a lot of things. And I went that night. I will never forget. I had just a bag, my one bag that they gave me, and recharge card, a rechargeable lantern, sorry. I carried everything and I zipped the bag and I laid my hands. I prayed with tears coming out of my eyes for three hours non-stop in tongues. I said, Lord, enough is enough. I'm tired of this situation. Listen, for as long as you keep massaging poverty in your life, I promise you it will never leave you. It takes aggression, the fatness of your neck to break that chain and that yoke. That's what I did. I carried that bag and I was on my way. I went to the church. There was an overflow, so I sat down outside. And while I sat down outside, when it was time to sow, people were sowing television, signing checks of millions. I didn't have all of that, but I was determined to break out of poverty. Watch this. I wanted to move and the Holy Spirit told me to stay back. Look at this embarrassment. After everybody had given, then the Holy Spirit told me you can now go. In a very seemingly disgraceful and embarrassing way, I carried my back. That was my Isaac, truly from the depth of my heart, home and abroad. As I dragged it to the altar, it wasn't to give the usher and say, please, I'm embarrassed. Help me drop it there. There were beautiful ladies in that church. But I said, none of you gave me money. I'm determined to break out of this poverty. 
where you are determined all these side distractions that carelessness here and there brings you set your face like a flint and I went there when I went I dropped it on the altar some people were laughing at me of course because the bag was not looking like something I'm sure they would just send it to one orphanage but that was my eyes listen and I returned back to my seat outside I stood there and it was as if somebody was piercing my heart with a knife a thousand times and while I stayed there the Holy Ghost spoke to me and he said son from this day you have entered wealth that's what the Holy Spirit did. he said from this day you have entered wealth I will never forget the next day 6 6 10 on the dot in the morning somebody calls me shaking and says are you Joshua Selman I say yes I say who are you he said I don't know you but the Holy Spirit instructed me to sow a seed into your life please I need your account number I said what in the world is this a few days later the chairman board of trustee of this ministry he's a general now he called me and I think he transferred how much was it 400,000 or something into my account no 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 he first gave me 150,000 he said the Lord led me to tell you that you should buy a laptop and also buy a camera they were doing a probe. <sighs> within a span of about one week having prepared myself the door started opening mysteriously in less than four to five months I made my first million I will never forget how it felt that day not borrow not father's money not uncle and auntie not our money I just stood there and I said there is a wealthy place time will never change anything decisions do I'm going to challenge everyone to sow a seed if you don't believe in what I'm saying please stop we're rounding up the Lord led me to do this I'm going to challenge everybody I want you to sow a seed it's very important help it's not about money you know that we're people of integrity here but I want to challenge you to sow a seed even if it's not something you can do now but I want to challenge you something that you will connect with and say Lord I'm tired please if you don't believe it you don't need to argue just just remain where you are but I have seen this is the correct context in which sowing of seed comes into place not just telling people so 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 no 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 no. when you guide them and this foundation is there then you will sow there is a minimum offering there is a minimum amount i can never give god less than that for the rest of my life i will be a wicked person no i put a benchmark not in the house of god again. i want to pray for you from the depth of my heart we have called it the year of the rain I don't want to fool you we are not native doctors there is a law please i want you to package a seed and lift it up take over take over we have come to the end of ourselves take over take over we have touched the end of ourselves hallelujah hallelujah we have come to the end of ourselves hallelujah hallelujah one more time just one time hey, take over take over i have come to the end of myself I have seen how people in ignorance allow the devil to make nonsense out of their lives choose between raising a godly family or not getting married choose between being a very wealthy man or a pastor hello 
choose between being the first graduate from your village or being a popular musician anything that you can use to give God glory is what Satan is looking for he will find you he will haunt you and if you do not understand the systems of the kingdom he will make sure that he makes nonsense out of your life and listen the moment he sees that your health and vitality and energy has been committed unto God he will now find a particular disease and program it across your lineage not you if you have headache that means it may just be that you need you just need some time to rest satan is too wicked to just give you a headache satan wants to program something you heard that dear lady cancer in um the grandmother just like faith can be transferred so you program it in a way that a young lady is just 35, 36, and all of a sudden she's feeling, what is this? Ah, mama died of cancer. Now I'm having cancer. Tomorrow another person has cancer. Those people don't need healing. They need deliverance. It looks like it's healing. Ask Jesus, woman, thou art loose first. When you are loose, then he laid hands on her. He said, now you, your body can participate. But the real thing is the bondage in the spirit. Are we together now? Yes. Anything you see in your family that is not only you that is suffering, you need to stand for them today. Oh. If you are the only one having it, it may just be your not understanding, your this and that, but provided you are not the only one. No. Your grandmother was raped by a stupid man. Your mother was raped by a stupid man. You, you were raped by a stupid man. Must you wait until your daughter is raped? You stand up and say, in the name of Jesus. Someone paid your grandmother's dowry and ran away. They paid your mother's dowry and ran away. Now somebody is wanting to pay your dowry and, and run away. You stand and say, Lord, this must end. Look, let me tell you, nothing changes until men get angry enough to say, Lord, it must stop. Are we together? Yes, it must stop. How about finances? Look at me. There are some of you here, I don't mean to insult you and I don't mean to embarrass you, but let me tell you the truth. Until God does something to your hand, money will never stay in your hand. I'm not talking about money. You can be as intelligent as whatever. I'm telling you, it takes more than a good transaction to keep this thing because money, like a human being, has a spirit, a soul, and a body. The spirit of money is mammon or the Holy Spirit. There has to be a controlling factor. The soul of money is the, the, the intellectual system that brings the exchange. The body of money is the physical thing you are holding. So if all you are holding is just the physical thing, you are a joker. There is a spirit that can call what is in your hand and it will leave you. It's true. So the devil sees that this family wants to call upon the name of the Lord and make sure that everybody remains poor. Can I tell you this? And I don't mean to insult you, but more than 60% of the people seated here, your major prayer point, corporately as a family, is, oh God, let your heavens be open so that your supplies can come. There may be other things, but you will prefer supplies a thousand times than your leg that is paining you to be to be fine there is an agenda i've shared with you my vision i will continue to share it years ago i was praying i think i was uh, i can't remember what was happening and then my my ceiling just disappeared i didn't see a building again and the next thing I looked and I saw a giant creature, mighty creature, the eyes as big as the head of a man. And then it was, it looked like a dinosaur, but the tail had its own life, meaning you could disconnect the tail from the body and it would still be in existence. And it was just fuming with red eyes looking at me. 
and saying so you think you can bring God's people into abundance that was the end that was when I agreed that prosperity is spiritual if all you have is a contract you are joking if all you have is a shop well done but you are in trouble if all you have is a good business you heard the testimony of this dear um, wonderful man that came from Koza that just shared here now estates and everything just given no it's not just a man that gave him there is a spirit behind it you need to be empowered to fail i hope you know that when you are failing consistently there is an anointing making that happen an anointing is simply an empowerment everybody hates you you are supposed to bless me as soon as i come you hate me i now go here and i'm too late it's not normal when the coincidences are too accurate there is a spirit making it happen someone calls you and says, please come let me give you something to pay the rent of your family the moment that statement happens the devil makes sure that the man receives a call that is an emergency call are you seeing that now and he leaves the office you arrive the office you find out the door is locked he says if the young man comes just give him two thousand to go back it's a lie the man did not leave something happened there is a spirit behind that operation how many of you have gone to to seek people over something that is so simple maybe just a signature and it will take two weeks three weeks you believe it's normal and then sometimes a man of god may pray for you and speak and you go back and the person who should not be there in the afternoon is now there he was not there an angel kept him there this is how this kingdom operates your destiny helper the destiny helper of your family can be two blocks away from you but because there is no spiritual connection my brother and my sister you can stay 15 years whereas the person ordained by God to lift you is just two blocks you will go to America and return back like a thief you will go to UK and return back like somebody that God hates but the day God decides to locate you you will be surprised is God speaking to us that's why we're here tonight you can be a man of God and like the gentleman who listened to designing the body probably God has been telling you look your ministry will never grow until you receive a word of impartation and prophecy but you'll be surprised how you'll be planning for five years I will come for koinonia you will now say next week you will say Kai uh, ah I'm feeling cold let me just relax as soon as you want to travel your sister will just say ah, I just came on break let me tell you all those acting is a lie but there's something about the will of man the day you stamp your feet and say today I name today as my day of breakthrough the Bible said today if you hear his voice every day becomes your today until the day your faith says no tomorrow again it has to be today are we together so tonight I don't want you to sit down and waste your time you are hearing people testify my brothers and my sisters I tell you by the grace of God there is enough grace and power to turn your life to bring any it's not very difficult no it's just your connection stop the arguments the war that is happening in your head can God do this you can't leave Lagos leave the east leave the north and come and sit down you are wondering you believe that God brought you to waste your time no sir no sir I tell you in a moment in a twinkling of an eye oh can can the hepatitis go can this go we're talking God here we're not talking the the chief consultant of a, a, a hospital the God of heaven can that yoke go we are nine people in our family apostle nobody has a job it's not about the job the devil has seen that in the job of those nine people is the bread of maybe 30 children those nine people the money from those nine people will empower a church to preach 
and save somebody who will become a mighty man and for the sake of that mighty man those nine people will remain poor it's not about the family hallelujah if satan had his way he will kill me crumble this ministry make every koinonia message around the world to disappear all of a sudden in everybody's phone if he can do that he can beat his chest and say i've tried ah but there's a song that says satan shame unto you you know the song don't sing it oh <laughs> We make our boast in the Lord. In the next few minutes, we are going to so rubbish the devil in this place. Let me tell you. First of October, we'll let, we'll let the devil know what is in Nigeria. He has tasted what is in America, what is in Russia, what is in this. And then you see your life change. A miracle is a wonder. That, that the limit. Oh, hold his hands. Try to stop him. Two of you. You know that game they used to play? That you try. Oh, yeah. Do it now. You are, uh, don't, no, don't, don't draw him too much. Sorry. You are not very kind. Now, watch this. Are you seeing that now? This guy can be growing old every year. You are celebrating birthday and nothing is moving in your life. Because there is a devil somewhere determined to make sure you don't rise. Let me tell you my assignment. This is me now coming into this equation. My, my assignment is not to cut what is there. My assignment is to carry this like this, this one. Because, you see, I can cut what is there and pass. You can enjoy breakthrough while you are about to go. He's going to hold you and say, come back. Apostle has gone. So the, the job has not been done. My assignment by the grace of God is to carry this mountain you are seeing and carry it out of the way. One, that's number one. That's not all. Then my assignment is to turn you to the direction. That's where prophecy is powerful. And then turn what would have come to you from that delay. If I leave you like this, you are not oppressed, but you, are, you still don't have breakthrough. You are free from oppression, but you have not entered your inheritance. So you can't testify. But whatever that is, when it comes to you and you go to it, and then I leave you. My job is to... And, and the thing is that all these things happen through words. The word that is sent to supervise and make sure you get to your inheritance. And then by next week, you are coming with an employment letter and you are on your knees saying, God, what is this? What is this? Then two weeks later, five people, all barring in your family, are saying, ah, I, I, I think I'm pregnant. Then you just remember, ah, what has happened? A man of God that you have space for 500 people in your church, and yet you see 10 people, 15. During a convention, they grow to 30. By the time service is finishing, there's 20 back. And all of a sudden, something happens. And one spectacular miracle happens by the next Sunday in a way that even the critics say i'm here in your church today to watch what happened and you said i never believed i would buy canopy for an overflow but the anointing god brought you here to change your life listen to me i repeat god brought you here to change your life he didn't bring you to just be happy that a program koinonia no this is a miracle service. A miracle service is not a teaching service. I will take out time and teach you, but this is a miracle service. There are some of you, you may not be sick, you may not be oppressed, but you need to carry something that ends every argument. Result, my brothers and my sisters, is the end of every argument. I can lie to you. Or you can deceive me that you are having a pocket square. And I can argue because I'm not seeing it. But if you bring out a pocket square and I see it, this is the end of the argument. It would be stupid to still argue. At that point, you will let everybody know you are a madman. This is the result. Could it be that you have been talking too much? Let the anointing talk. 
ah, I, will, I will build the house. I know God is faithful. I will do this. And God is saying, no. Moses only spoke small. And then the rod kept talking. You have been talking forever. Some of you, you are here in this meeting because there is a rod that God will give you. You stood before the Red Sea for forever. It refused to part. But God brought you here to carry something that you go back with it and it will shock you my brothers and my sisters that that red sea will part and you will call your family and say finally we've been wondering how to build a bridge but we found an easier road that the river can part tonight i want you to know that god wants to do this number one because he loves you but number two, there is a dimension of glory only your results can bring to him. Don't ever let anyone fool you. Hearing is our father glorified. John 15 and verse 8. This is how I am glorified. Galatians chapter 1 verse 29 says, And they glorified God in me. Not that they glorified God on the throne. They looked at my life. They saw that God can do this you no father no mother who gave you the job who did you know from the top you're a man of god i used to know your father as a wheelbarrow pusher and you say my brother is what god can do if it is the lord's doing it is marvelous in our eyes for as long as your life is ordinary your ministry is ordinary your business is ordinary you will continue to explain and explain and argue and explain and explain and explain let me tell you god takes away shame from our lives by giving us results did you hear what i said god does not take away shame by explaining anything to anybody he does something in your life and he does it in a way like julius berger will build a house and put God will do it and put his signature. They'll say, no, this business cannot be human. I hear testimonies of people every time. The things that God does in and through their lives. A wonder. Please let your heart be open No. Oh. Don't let the devil make you come here and waste your time. Whether you are outside overflow, one overflow, two overflow, three online, whatever nation you are following, just listen. I believe him. I may not claim I know everything about him, but this God, when God decides to stand up from his throne, he said, now arise from your throne. God can stand up. Have you heard that the earth is his footstool? So when he decides to stand up and say, who has made the cry of my daughter to continue coming? The Bible says, even the mountains keep like lambs. My God is mighty. Our own belief many times is the reason why God does not move. We come and sit down and pile up. Some of you have come with all kinds of forms and pictures and that's wonderful. But you are there wondering, can you move, oh God, concerning my money? Can you move concerning my money? Can you move concerning my health? Can you move concerning my wife? And God is saying, yes, I can. I am willing and I'm able. And then the devil comes very quickly and says, if God could move, didn't man of God pray for you in, by March? Didn't your pastor fast seven days for you? And you say, it's true. Oh, that's the devil. Tonight, your faith must be open. Your faith must rise to the heavens to say, Lord, I don't want to leave this place just knowing I'm blessed. I want to know what happened to me. I want to hold a substance. God is speaking to someone here. This, this sharing the grace and saying, ah, were you blessed? Oh my God, miracle service was powerful. That's not a blessing, no. You can hold on to something and know that I left this place. What happened? The pain is gone. I left this place. What happened? That before the grace is shared you check your phone and all of a sudden a text that you have been waiting for for five years now that's an evidence this is what we are talking about all of a sudden you are sitting down while you are seeing me preach 
you have been trusting God for that prophetic grace and while the preaching is going all of a sudden your eyes are open you are saying so this is what apostle is saying and you are seeing the power of God touching somebody and then you hear me say there's someone here and you are saying my God I've gotten this Elisha knew when he got it Elisha knew when he got it he went to the sea where is the Lord God of Elijah and the river parted you are trusting God for the grace for revelation that before the meeting is over all of a sudden scriptures it's as if it's an injection from your spirit you are just connecting one revelation to this and you're saying I, I can't remember studying this and then you discern that something is happening something is happening that heaviness has gone where is the fear yesterday night I couldn't sleep the fear of death is gone listen Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 says that the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ if you don't expect it and you don't pay attention to it if I ask this gentleman to give me water I'm expectant I'm not expecting a handkerchief I'm expecting water anything I see that looks like water is attracting my attention a double-minded man let that man not think he will receive anything from God thank God for people falling and flying up and down but your eyes is stayed like a flint Lord I left Lagos this morning and I came here I left Bielsa and I came here my car almost had an accident Lord I would have been in a convention now as a man of God I left it to be here I'm looking for something let something come from heaven and your hunger is like a force that is drawing something from heaven and all of a sudden boom I tell you in one minute I remember many years ago when I was standing in the rain had Bonke crusade there were crowds of people like this I didn't know what who wore whether you wore red or green or blue my eyes were fixed Lord what did you give this man that made every nation to open to him what kind of man is this that no one criticizes him Abba, I didn't just go there to receive anointing for miracles alone no when it came I knew that I got it I knew that I got it listen my brothers and my sisters you can know that the load has been lifted you can know that the prayer has been answered you can know that the project is a done deal are we together the grace is here more than available for you and whilst we begin to pray don't just watch others receive be sensitive you are the one who knows what you are here for are we together in one minute I'd like you to open your mouth and cry. Mention specifically, why are you here? Talk to the Lord. Please pray. Please pray. Pray with all your heart. Lord, I had a young man testify that you gave him properties. I had a young lady, born, had never smelled. She was not in a miracle service, just listening to a message. And all of a sudden, the healing power of God touches that lady and that's it. Lord, I'm tired of this lump. Lord, I'm tired of this medical report. I'm tired of watching my mother cry, my father cry. I'm tired of my ministry not growing. I'm tired of staying at a particular level in the anointing. Lord, I've heard testimonies of favor. I have an idea of what happens when a man is carrying favor. But Lord, I don't see it yet in my life. 
I'm here tonight for this one reason. Lord, even after the deliverance series, I've been seeing certain things happen in my life and my family that pre-informs me that I will still need a second touch. A second touch over my family. My loved ones are not born again. Lord, I can't watch them go to hell like this. Don't be tired of praying. Please cry from the depth of your heart. Lord, I'm not going back with this disease. I'm not going back with this medical report. No way. No way. No way. I insist. I'm not going back barren. Tired of miscarriages. the universe what can't you do what can't you do Jesus you're the name above every other name what can't you change what can't you change Jesus one more time creator Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? I want you to see the Lord lifting your burden. You're the name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change, Jesus? You are able, great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. You are able, great and mighty God. You are able. I will continue to read it for you Isaiah chapter 61 please give it to us the messianic prophecy Jesus's own manifesto he's saying this is what I came to do Isaiah 61 it says the Spirit of the Lord we are reading from verse 1 to 4 is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Start looking for your own as I'm reading. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those that mourn. 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beautiful ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified for and they shall build the old wastes they shall raise up the former desolations they shall repair waste cities he says the desolations of many generations i like you to pray whatever needs to be fixed in your life and family insist that tonight is the night when it will happen overflow one pray overflow two 
overflow free by the roadside those following from around the world open up your heart and pray from the depth of your heart Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord just showed me something like a train. You know, a speed train, not like we have it now. Just like a train, just pass like this. And I believe in my spirit that that is a typology of a grace for speed. Listen. Listen. We are going to pray now. And like I always say, you'll find out when I pray, you're going to see people running around in and out. Please just guide them and bring them out. Ushers, whether you are an usher or not, the ushers can only do so much. I want to pray. Once I pray that prayer, listen, please, I don't want you to get, listen, please, hold on. I don't want, it, the idea is not about people falling down, carrying them. Please let your spirit be open. Be open for when your word will come. Be open for when God will visit and locate you. That, that's, that's what you're here for. So I want to pray that prayer now. Jesus. I'm seeing a lot of those people at Overflow 1. A lot of the people who will be affected by this prayer. I know overflow one, the overflow outside. You see, let me tell you this. When a man, listen, when a man does not have speed in his life, you don't have the entire lifetime to do all that you should do. It, it takes more than just power, right? Please help those in overflow one, my God. I'm seeing very strange angelic activities happening already at overflow one outside. Now, listen when there is no speed in your life listen imagine that i have to walk from here to maybe the roadside and i'm tiptoeing on one leg am i moving yes sir but when will you arrive there the pressure that you will mount on this leg it will affect you to a point that you may not even stand it and so god when he wanted elijah to move because he had already been delayed the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He was empowered of the spirit and he ran. I, I, I'm, I'm saying this before I pray so that you don't just think it's about anointing and people running around. No. When that grace comes upon you, what God is saying is I'm ready to shift you. That within a short time, you will see a lot happen in your life. In three days, the work of redemption was done three days this powerful redemption did not happen in 12 years it happened in three days by the end of three days jesus had ascended poured his blood returned back he was ready it was now to launch the church big things don't have to take plenty time when the hand of god comes upon you you will see that a defining moment in your life can happen so fast are you ready now? Lift your hands. I want to pray. I will do the praying. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is asking me to shout Jesus, not you now. I'm the one shouting Jesus. I'm going to shout it and at the third time, I tell you it's going to be an avalanche of the power of God. Let me have those people out. Lord, 
you are bringing speed to your people and i know that there are angels all around it's time to change people's levels and even as you have instructed me oh god as i declare that name that is above every other name i pray that anyone under the sound of my voice who has been crippled in one position that in the name of the god of heaven an anointing will shift that person into his destiny jesus that's number one mm. jesus that's number two get ready now jesus let that anointing right now i shift man speed speed to your life oh god let every delay be broken now i command the spirit of delay be broken speed i shift you by the power of the holy ghost help that woman please help that mama there please help them whether you are an usher or not speed speed in the name of jesus i command everything that has refused to move in your life i move it by the power of the holy ghost i'm still praying i'm still praying the holy ghost is moving you except this prayer is not for you there is an anointing that must shift you must shift you by the power of the holy ghost lord shift them to their destinies please you will need to help the ushers whether you are an usher or not just just help them there's only so much we can do there's no power that keeps you down this is miracle service lift your hands please i'm praying for some of you now is the same prayer but it's no longer just for you you may not be experiencing it but your family needs speed the anointing now is moving from individuals to families lord where are the families that need the shift of the holy ghost i decree and declare right now i speak by this apostolic and prophetic grace families be shifted now speed 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 Speed, Papa Rakoto Shegeta, Epre Kete 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 Kete. I decree it, I declare it. I decree it and I declare it. Shapa Kato Katabala Katosh. No more delay. I stretch my hands I'm seeing an angel of the Lord just on this road I stretch my hands right now I move people God is moving people here I decree it I declare I decree I declare I decree I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus it must work for you I shift you no more delay in your life this lady wearing hijab right now the lord is shifting you that lady in the name of jesus i stretch my hands let the anointing of the spirit take away delay from your life right now in the name of jesus now all those in front i'm praying any chain that has tied anyone's leg or any family at the count of three i speak into the realm of the spirit those chains go now one two three go 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 i lose those families now i command chains be broken now 
let the families be set free in the name of Jesus young lady lift your hands you you put in your hand on your yes i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on you and the lord is saying that he's shifting things i'm seeing like a chain on your head being broken now i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus let that chain be broken let that chain i command that devil i'm seeing a snake in the spirit let her go now in the name of jesus hallelujah be sensitive i want to pray a very serious prayer now he said behold i give you authority over snakes and scorpions if you don't like the prayer and pray no problem but i want to pray a dangerous prayer i'm seeing snakes this is what i'm seeing over families now let me tell you this reptilian objects is a representation of the spirit of sorcery in the name that is above all names i declare every spirit that has caged any family here i decree and i declare right now by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus and at the count of three everyone shout jesus as you shout jesus i see fire everywhere inside and outside there is massive deliverance about to happen i command every devil and every activity of sorcery to leave now one two three in the name of jesus i crush satan i crush his works inside outside i command every power every force go now go now hallelujah please be sensitive just give me the volume i'm seeing fire by my left and right just bring out all the people that fall under the anointing now as i'm walking here in the name of jesus i command that devil you must go now you must go now you must go now i declare it by the anointing of the holy ghost as soon as i come close to you that fire and there is an anointing you can't stand it it's impossible as soon as i come close to you as soon as i come close to you that fire there is a judgment let them go now i'm coming this way right now in the name of jesus the power of god is coming this area this direction let them go now release them i come by the anointing of the holy ghost let them go now let them go now release them i'm seeing someone here tied around the stomach release them now let them go in the name of jesus let them go now by the power of the holy ghost i stretch my hands here right now the fire of god is setting people free now lose them lose them lose them lose them lose them lose them now lose them lose them in the name of jesus lose them now those outside lift your hands god is about to set you free please i like you to pray everyone pray enough is enough tonight everyone pray everyone pray now listen overflow one listen to me listen you don't have to touch me please you don't have to touch me but in the name of jesus hear me the lord brought me out here because the time has come for something to leave someone as soon as i pass here i don't have to come close to you you are going to feel fire all all over that fire 
that will be the end of it you must testify right now i stretch my hands right right now it's over over now Shakos Katadika, a Keto Santa Ricata, Empre Keto Seketa, a Kato Sekriaka, Manta Precotos. Let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go now. The spirit of sorcery, I cause it now. The spirit of witchcraft, I cause it now. Please help your neighbors so they don't enjoy themselves. Go, go, be free. I command that power by fire. By fire, by fire, it leaves you now. Those of you here, I want you to lift your hands. Overflow two. Overflow two, lift your hands. Let me go to the front there. Enough is enough. As I pass this place, listen, I want you to be very sensitive. There is a strong anointing tonight. Overflow two. Please help your neighbors. I'm only going to pass here right there. As soon as I come close to you, except God is not God. If there is any force holding you, holding your life and your ministry, it must go right now. Right now, in Jesus' name, be free. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I command those devils. Go, 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 go. Let them go, go. Go now, release them, release them, release them. Every covenant, release them. I break that power now, 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 now. Be broken. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, listen, I didn't know we have an extra overflow here. I want to pray for those by the side here. As I stretch my hands to you, please don't waste your time. I'm seeing fire already. Here, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, those of you by the roadside, one, two, let them go by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you, please help them so they don't injure themselves. I declare, I decree, and I declare, you are free. Praise the Lord. Overflow 3, your life is about to change. Listen. Listen. Honestly, there is, there is an anger in my spirit. Because as I entered, I'm just seeing chains everywhere. Right now, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, bring all of them out. From the front to the back. Right now, at the count of three, overflow 3, all of you shout Jesus. One, two, three. Every power, bring them out. Every yoke, every force, every operation of darkness, bring them out. I'm seeing chains on people's feet. Chains, chains, chains be broken now. Be broken now, be broken now, be broken now, be broken now. Change, be broken now. Hallelujah. Bring them out. Overflow three, lift your hands and see praying. Listen. I'm seeing, I'm seeing patterns, something that is not just happening to you alone, happening to your father, your mother. As soon as I pray now, I'm seeing fire all over this place. Anyone under that case, you must be free now. At the count of three, anyone holding any pattern, any generational thing in the name that is above all names, at the count of three, one, two, three. Shout Jesus! Bring them out! That devil must let you go today. 
name prakata kata 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 e kapoko to shoto kete kete my god look at what god is doing in overflow 3 sha prakato shekete skaba em prakato koto shabaria look at what god is doing in this place em prakete kete keto shabaru katos hallelujah listen to me the lord is showing me i'm coming back but i don't know why god is 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 on the case of overflow three the lord is showing me some of you i'm seeing you are climbing a ladder but that ladder breaks down and brings you down you see things as if it's supposed to happen but a force draws you back the moment someone wants to lift you you will have a dream in the night and in that in that dream someone will come to sleep with you or something will happen right now at the count of three shout jesus i command those devils one two three let them go now let them go now total emancipation Hallelujah. Jakakos kaparusi kata hasana katushia. Embrekata katos kata preketish. Now, now, all those who are under the anointing here outside, I pass a decree that every power that has held you, I speak as one send. At the count of three, let them go. One, two, three, go, 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 let them go. Lose your hold over their lives. Let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. Hallelujah. I'm inside this place now. And I'm standing in the spirit. I've not started impartation yet. But the Lord is showing me the number 12. And the Lord is saying there are 12 people here. There is a strong call upon your life. There is a mighty anointing. Lord, where are they? Shagatos kapakarikata. Drink of that wine. Mantekatos ketekekata. Shabrakata. A ministry of signs and wonders. Ministry of signs and wonders. A ministry of signs and wonders. A ministry of signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. I'm still praying. The anointing of the spirit is still locating men. I don't know why God is talking about ministry. The call. Don't run away from the call. Don't run from the call. A ministry of signs and wonders. The Lord is telling someone, you are the liberator of your family. A ministry of signs. Signs, 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 signs. There are ladies here entering that ministry of signs and wonders signs and wonders hallelujah main auditorium lift your hands i'm seeing i'm seeing a distribution of the healing anointing going on in the main auditorium and i stretch my hands from here it doesn't matter what overflow you just be sensitive to what god is doing main auditorium i'm seeing eight people eight people in the main auditorium at the count of three right now in the name of jesus fire will come upon your hands i'm prophesying to the main auditorium but everybody can receive I decree and declare that healing anointing one two three let that anointing come now let it come now fresh fire hallelujah listen listen i'm seeing oh my god the lord is opening my eyes here i'm I'm seeing someone don't don't be ashamed and don't be embarrassed your father I don't know if I'm seeing something like a priest 
this is someone that worships something like an idol is in your house i'm not saying you're a bad person please i'm not saying you're a bad person you grew up seeing this happen that they worship those idols that gentleman is here in overflow three oh, oh, oh yeah please who is that person come i want to break that thing now from your life please quickly please make sure you hear what i say before you come just let make way for them the power of witchcraft young man you're going to be a mighty man of god i don't know you lift your hands an anointing is coming upon you now huh? it will shift you to a realm of signs and wonder or let that anointing come upon him right now in the name of jesus christ Hold my hands, my dear. The power of idols. In the name of Jesus, I break that force now. I break that force now. I break that force now. Testimony of breakthrough for you and for your family. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. hallelujah i'm praying listen i stretch my hands towards you and i speak i don't know what it is that you have been involved in but in jesus name i'm stretching my hands why am i seeing fire leaving my hands who is it looking for in the name of jesus christ I command everything that is not of God be broken now. The blood be broken now. By the blood be broken now. By the blood be broken now. By the blood be broken now. Hallelujah. Just two more things I'll do here. Whether I'm in this overflow or not, I just stood here to show you that it makes no difference. I know the larger congregation is here. Lift your hands, all of you, if you can. Just lift it as high to the heavens. Now, I'm seeing, you don't have to come out, but I'm seeing keys in the spirit. Listen, this is access to a new dimension. And I'm seeing the number 44. Just lift your hands. You don't need to say anything. Father, I stand as one sent. Those keys are locating families and locating people. It may be a key that explains why things have not been working. Lord, from the front to the back, like a mighty wind, whoever must receive that key, receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. let her go now out out now now this lady wearing a red hair tie in the name of jesus i'm seeing a grace that is coming let that anointing come upon you in the name of jesus christ let that anointing come upon you hallelujah overflow three i'm seen by the spirit the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing the names of members of your family like written already written already i'm going to pray listen except god has not sent me as i'm praying some of you instantly the power of god will come upon you and god is going to open your eyes you are going to see victory and deliverance in fact i see a family where three of your siblings they've married none of them has a child none of them at all has a child they've done everything to do 
but there's no child but i stand in the name of the lord father where are those families right now like a mighty wind like a mighty wind oh god let it end right now let there be an opening let there be an opening let there be an opening in the name that is above all names let there be an opening young lady come call that lady for me call this gentleman too this man yes bring him in the name of jesus you need to be delivered i command the spirit that torments you to go now by the power of the holy ghost i release you my dear hold my hands to you i'm saying that your life is about to change two weeks from now it will surprise you what the lord is going to do in your life i decree and i declare it over your life i stand by the anointing and i pray for you father according to your word within two weeks turn this lady's life around supernaturally in the name of jesus emeka who is emeka emeka i'm hearing a name emeka overflow three here i'm just talking to overflow three people emeka emeka please quickly please quickly don't waste that time where is that gentleman what's your name i want to pray what do you do i'm going to pray for you you are not from this place you came for nyc i want to pray lift your hands because i'm seeing look at me the lord is giving you the grace for wealth huh I want you to believe it but every prosperity that does not have an assignment to end up destroying the people you love Jesus with all your heart I want to pray for you it will surprise you the way God will begin to turn things around in your life father change this gentleman's story in the name of Jesus forever overflow three I'm still praying the spirit of prophecy is coming on nine people i will count four at the fourth count one two three where are they oh god four nine people nine people the spirit of prophecy the spirit of prophecy all of you open your mouth and begin to pray everything you desire overflow three open your mouth and decree open your mouth and decree i'm seeing an anointing around here who is that person i stretch my hands i'm seeing chains breaking just within this region as i'm standing here father let the chains be broken now the anointing of the spirit find that person let the chains be broken right now right now right now right now right now right now be broken now Hallelujah. please everyone pray everyone pray everyone pray everyone pray hold on there's someone here the lord is saying i'm rolling away your shame i'm seeing light as i was just passing i just saw light two people let the anointing find those people now two people right now i decree overflow two right now in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name i decree and declare by the anointing of the holy ghost shame reproach let it go now shame reproach let it go now shame reproach help them let it go now in the name of jesus christ who is gabriel 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 i'm hearing a name who is gabriel is there someone like that you are wearing a maroon you are wearing like maroon kaftan gabriel maroon kaftan is there someone like that what's your name do i know you lift your hands my brother god is about to change your life god is about to turn your life around um, where are you coming from I want to pray for you you love Jesus what is is it Oleku or Aleku what is that huh? Huh? where are you from 
uh, Benway State. You are from Benway State. This is what has tied down your life and your family. I want to pray for you. I'm not a herbalist there. Eh? Father, in the name of Jesus, let this gentleman be free right now. I command that devil to leave you now. Just keep him there. In the name of Jesus. These two people, this gentleman, you, yes, and the lady by you, come quickly. Please. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. What do you do, my friend? You're a student. You love Jesus. I want to pray for you. Huh? Yes, sir. Are you together? Yes, sir. Because I saw light on you. Husband and wife? Yes, please, sir. Well, I'm not going to discuss your issue now, but two of you need deliverance. Eh? You love Jesus, but you need serious deliverance based on what I'm seeing now. Huh? You are not husband and wife yet, but I'm seeing a lot of stories. Father, in the name of Jesus, look at me. You're going to be very wealthy, but the first thing you need to edit are your friends. Huh? Hear what I'm telling you. Huh? My, uh, my sister, you know what I'm saying, right? Huh? So your friends. Huh? Confirm, sir. Listen to me. You are not truly born again if your friends don't change. Hear it from me. All this born again that is one leg and you have all kinds of friends. If, if I am a drunkard and you are not a drunkard but we are staying together, I'm close to a drunkard. That means I can be implicated by everything a drunkard can be implicated by. Is that true? So my friend, you love God, eh? but you see, um, look at what I'm doing. One leg in, one leg out huh? don't be embarrassed when I make the altar call you need to run and come quickly Jesus is not just some religious thing that you just run to just for, no 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 Let, let's take God serious and take him look what I see my friend I see God turning your life in a way that will surprise you but friends and this is not just a message to this gentleman alone it's a message to many of us because the demons that destroy our lives work by bringing wrong friends they make you compromise your values it's not your fault but when they come they are vocal about what they believe and because you do not have a community of like-minded believers but let me tell you the truth it matters who you listen to if the devil positions a wrong person to counsel you and they give you a counsel of a hit or fail God may be calling you to a great ministry, but you will hear a counsel that would destroy God's purpose over your life. I pray for everyone here that in the name of Jesus, if you are under the yoke of wrong friends, I stand and I speak right now. May the Lord set you free this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, there is favor on your life, but it's not speaking at all. Hmm? You are a nice lady come i'm looking at you i'm seeing a young lady but i'm seeing the face of you and another old woman flashing me and going back see wickedness is real oh let me tell you my brothers and my sisters wickedness is real huh it's a young beautiful lady you see her standing but you now look at it do you know let me explain something whatever overflow just listen i want to explain something you see this is the mistake that we men of God make sometimes. I can look at a beautiful lady like this now and see the face of an old woman. And if my word base is not sound and balanced, I will, I will interpret the vision I've seen verbatim and now call her a witch. You see the mistake we make? That we call people and then assuming now they are married, I will now advise him and say, Mr. Man, you married a witch. Oh. You, do you know what it means to be a witch? So God is, you see that God is, is balancing a lot of things in our lives. Let's be careful. Because sometimes we may see a vision. I already know what is happening. It is true that the lady needs help. But it doesn't mean, imagine that I look at this lady now and say, my dear, you're a witch. No, this is a lovely, she has a beautiful heart. I already see by the spirit. Very beautiful heart. But it, beauty and a good heart does not take away oppression. It takes the power of God. How terrible art thou in your ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. So many of you are here. You find out, for instance, 
the moment you enter a relationship come for instance assuming i enter a relationship with this lady and you find out that there may be something wrong in her life and it starts affecting me have you seen that happen i'm doing well in business but just because i married this lady i start going down and now you meet a man of god and if the man if you're in ministry here please be careful you have to trust god for grace to be balanced are we together i can now look at this lady and say ah your wife is the reason behind your failure um what i'm trying to say is that oh there might be a spirit connected to her that is affecting me and the works of my hands but it doesn't mean she's bad a good man of god will bring about that separation and then through the transforming power of the word now help this couple to stand and become the best of couple because a body without a spirit is dead so it's not about condemning and destroying the body are you getting it now so my dear let me tell you you're a wonderful lady huh we are going to deal with this nonsense now this whatever it is that the devil is bringing, because this thing is affecting your life you don't know why good things don't come to you you're a very nice lady hold my hands father hold it with both of your hands i decree and declare ah. i'm seeing fire leaving my hands in the name of jesus I command this devil I'm seeing through the face of this old woman be gone now. My dear, I set you free and I open the door of favor for you right now. Please, everybody lift your hands. I'm seeing, I've not seen this in a long time. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing an anointing going to Benway State. Benway State, now. Benway State. You are from Benway State. You see that that power will touch you. Even if you don't know what state you are from. Benway State. Lord, where is In the name of Jesus. The power of God is bringing deliverance. Benway State. In the name that is above all names. In the name that is above all names. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I'm going to pray for you. Two things. I'm seeing that the devil wants to put stroke complete stroke the devil wants to paralyze you from head to toe but we're going to destroy that now in the name of jesus hold my hands i decree and declare be free now by the power of the holy spirit madam i don't know you but ah you please come Hi. this is your first time coming i need to pray for you what do you do ma you are jobless ma Huh? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit two of your hands are tied there is nothing you do that works and prospers it's not normal you are a very good woman please don't be embarrassed I hope I'm not embarrassing you I want to pray for you I give you three weeks 21 days ma your life will turn around in a way that will surprise you I lay my hands right now and I declare I'm seeing chains leaving you I command those chains to go father turn her life around in the name of jesus in the name of jesus please open your mouth and begin to pray hold on hold my hands in the name of jesus christ i open that closed door now i open that closed door now by the power of the holy ghost please open your mouth and begin to pray everyone open your mouth and pray The Lord is asking me to stand here, just here, just to stand here. Because the Lord is bringing breakthrough here and here, here and here, right now, here and here. I command right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, every planting that is not of God, I uproot it now, I uproot it now, I uproot it now. Lift your voice and begin to pray, please. Lift your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know our time is gone. We are going to be very fast. Sir, you're welcome, sir. Can I pray for you, sir? Why are they here? Priest. You, sir. You are a priest? I served, my father served and died. Sorry, where are you from, sir? I'm from Mallory. 
Sir, I want to pray for you. The Bible says, even the lawful captives, even the lawful captives. My brothers and my sisters, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life after this miracle service. This, this woman, come. Madam, you, yes, come. Please, quickly, come. We're out of time. Say in Jesus' name. Say it in Jesus' name. My life is about to change. Say it again. Say in Jesus' name. Reproach is leaving me now. In the name of Jesus, let it go forever. In Jesus' name. Sir, I hold your hands and in the name of Jesus, every ordinance that is not of God, help him. I command that it is broken right now. You are an elderly man, but I use you as a point of contact. We break every ordinance of darkness. This, this lady too priest you your dad your father is a priest currently oh where Oshun state don't be embarrassed eh? you are here because jesus wants to help you lord jesus it is not your will that any man perish but that everyone comes to the knowledge of the truth i deliver this lady right now everything they have given you to drink and eat I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I set you free now. Be gone. Now. Out. Let it leave her. I'm seeing that the father has given her so many things in her life. But in the name of Jesus. Kai, Jesus' power is really superpower. Really superpower. That in one moment, something that has been done in a lifetime can leave. Out. Now. Everything that is not of God. Our father is a priest or not her uncle direct father imagine how many times she has been involved in all of these things but in jesus name you are set free this this man too why is he here look at my eyes just look at my eyes you are receiving the healing anointing now huh? in the name of jesus christ Lord, grant him access to the healing anointing, your healing power. Now, oh dear, our time is gone. This is, sometimes I honestly wish that this is, because there are so many things I see, but we have to work with time. This lady, you, come. Hurry up now, please, come. Uh, we're out of time. Wonderful lady, look at me. You are a savior to your family. You hear what I said? You are a savior. You may look small, but you are a savior to your family. The only thing is that you need to continually be serious with God. Your heart with him. Your heart with him. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take away distraction from her life. Right now, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I take away distraction. I take away distraction. Okay? We have, we've not even prayed for the sick girl. My dear, come. This lady waving your hands. Come quickly. Your life is about to change. Come. Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. Yes, I'm here with my husband. Husband, yeah. where are you, sir? Let's clap for the husband. <laughs> Two of you came from Abuja. Last time. You came with? For SOM. Came. I can't remember. You came with your... Oh, your son was a graduate of SOM. No. We came with him. Oh, okay. So I'm a graduate. I want to pray. What do you do, sir? Um, I'm a minister of God. But at the same time, I do business. But it's sir, working. I want to pray for you. Eh? Things are not working. You need the anointing. You are a sincere man. My dear, the prophetic grace is coming on you as I'm speaking now. In the name that is above all names, I stretch my hands. That anointing you will start having dreams receive that grace two of you need empowerment ministry ministry without genuine empowerment will make it look as if you are wasting your time are you a man of god stand up stand up take that anointing now in the name of jesus you step into a new dimension i take away shame and reproach from your life and ministry from today you step into a realm of signs wonders miracles in the name of jesus can i pray for you sir 
Look at me. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Just hold it with both of your hands. In the name of Jesus, I transfer grace, signs and wonders, strange testimonies, your business between now and 30th of November, sir, your finances will change you and your wife in ways that will surprise you. You will come back and testify in the name of Jesus Christ. This man waving your hands, come together with that woman by your side. Who is she? Come, please, two of you, quickly. Let's appreciate them as they come. Oh, oh, oh. you sir i want to pray for you ah. madam i'm looking at you you're a nice woman but i'm seeing you carrying a load huh i'm seeing you like this and i'm seeing a load on your head and if i don't pray for you this load is going to destroy you i want to pray for you where are you coming from sir? are you new here by elsa by elsa hmm. all the way i think we should appreciate them <laughs> what do you do sir I'm a pastor. You're a pastor. You're in ministry, both of you? Evangelist. My ministry is separate. Your ministry is separate, evangelist. but both of you came from yes, Bielsa. You're an evangelist. Yes. You pastor a church? Yes. How long has it been? Okay, I was uh, about four years now in Bielsa. But you were somewhere? Yes, I was in Abuja. You were in Abuja? Yes. And then you left Abuja and went to Bielsa. Do you know what happened? Is it your church now? You're serving someone else's church. Okay, I want to pray for you. Because what I see God do through your life, I'm seeing God giving you two things. The grace for leadership, number one. Number two, the grace for finances. These two graces, God is giving it to you. I don't know you, sir. I'm seeing you for the first time. Ma, you are an evangelist. I'm going to pray for you. What do you do? You hold crusades and all of that? No, I, I usually have meetings every month and then I speak on radio. I have a live radio. I do my evangelical on radio. And then oh, you TV. do a live radio? Yes, live radio talk show. Three things. One, barrenness. Two, poverty. Three, witchcraft. You are carrying the grace to smash nonsense out of these three things as you are going back. Don't forget. Huh? The same grace on you, I'm seeing it come on this lady. This one. This one. This lady I'm talking to. I want to pray for you. Sir, this thing is an election of grace. You see, I'm, I'm also a spectator. The same way you are watching. Me too, I'm watching. With wonder and shock, the way this thing works. That God can just change a man's life overnight overnight evangelist my hold my hands father this is a dear woman of god all the way from bielsa i stand by the anointing of the holy spirit and i declare fresh anointing fresh dimensions in the spirit and i pray madam the lord is asking me to pray for your finances seriously for your finances and then the lord is saying i should tell you to pray for faithful workers I'm seeing you do a program for women when you go back. This thing I'm seeing is going to be a powerful program. There is a program in Abuja that looks like what you would do. It's called When Women Pray. I'm seeing that same kind of grace on you. That you are going back to Bielsa and God is giving you uncommon grace for women. In the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare you carry that grace right now, madam. My God will honor you. Ah! In the name of Jesus, supernatural grace. Drink of that wine, sir. I'll pray for you. The grace for leadership, the grace for finance. But I'm, ah, it's not only pastoring I'm seeing you do. What else do you do? I manufacture paint. You manufacture paint. That's right. Sir, what am I seeing? This is somebody, it's, it's not directly the government. But this is somebody that is connected to the government. 
the Lord is going to connect him to you. It's, it has something to do with supplies. That thing will make you millions overnight in a way that it will surprise you. Please write it. You will see it happen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. I stretch my hands. Drink of that wine. That anointing. Drink of that wine. You will never be the same. I stretch my hands. I take away every limitation from your life. And I decree and I declare your life turns around from today. In the name of Jesus. Give Jesus praise. Goodness. 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 Can we still pray for the sick? We can't close this without praying for the sick. In the name of Jesus, be healed from it now. I command that devil, that virus, go! Now! In the name of Jesus, you go and write your test, bring back your results. Go listen I, can we ah, time is gone. Oh dear. you see how sometimes this thing we are really constrained that's why we do our best the healing anointing is already flowing God wants to heal maybe I will just pray I will just pray for the sick from here we'll do it that way right but make no mistakes just that you, that you are not coming out doesn't mean I want to pray for you now we'll take a few testimonies now in the last three or four months i have seen i don't know why this happens but i have seen a dimension of the healing power of god very creative miracles so i want to pray you are trusting god for a miracle lay your hand right now on your body quickly i want to pray for you now please believe god for a miracle now this is what will happen overflow one two three the roadside and then those following us online our time is gone but as soon as i pray for you now i pray for you the power of god is going to come upon you i'm going to ask you to check yourself praise the lord we may not take all the testimonies but since we have chosen this method now as soon as i pray i ask you to check yourself you will be surprised what has happened to you and whether you are in overflow one two or three i'm going to ask you to run very quickly you're going to come right here pastor jimmy will be here with pastor alpha they will just check you and we'll take one or two of the testimonies and i'll just confirm that um how many of you brought your prayer request let me see did you bring your prayer request okay ushers this is what you, i want you to do pr department help them protocol please help them while i'm praying for the sick i think we can do it too your prayer request please make sure that your prayer request or that of your loved ones get to the ushers just lift it the ushers have a system of collecting it you don't have to be rowdy those outside you can pass it to the last person in the aisle if you will not bring any confusion you can have that very quickly please lay your hands now i want to pray jesus A lady in overflow one is going to shout a loud shout for everybody to hear as soon as that shout happens i'll begin to pray for the sick very loud shout from overflow one a strong anointing is coming on that person the moment that happens that's the shout there now i'm ready to pray for the sick in the name please agree with me everyone in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now those under the anointing you don't have to bring them out I'm, I'm praying now every spirit of infirmity please make sure you are hearing me overflow one two three every spirit of infirmity right now by the power of the Holy Ghost I curse you now I curse you now say amen I curse you now in the name of Jesus I command every spirit behind every infirmity 
over anyone's life be healed now in Jesus name be healed my God the power of God is touching people already be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus overflow one two three by the roadside be healed in the name of Jesus now I command every blood condition be healed from it now in Jesus name peptic ulcer the Lord is healing ulcer right now be healed in the name of Jesus Christ be healed in the name of Jesus Christ lumps all kinds of lumps multiple lumps I command those devilish lumps to live now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing a number of people having um, hepatitis the Lord is healing hepatitis right now by the power of the Holy Ghost eye conditions in the name of Jesus you're going to feel fire just come to your eyes be healed right now in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus every pain that has to do with the bones I decree and declare let the power of God touch you right now there's someone you have severe pain around your back just right here your lumbar vertebra in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands be healed right now in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name there's someone you don't hear well with your this is left left ear and then sometimes you just hear like a sharp you know how bees are that sound the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus every kind of fibroid every kind of growth in your stomach in the name of Jesus be healed from it now be healed from it now be healed from it now now whether I mention your case or not whatever is wrong with you I stretch my hands and I declare be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus some of you when you fell under the anointing long before I started praying for the sick you got up and found out that you have been healed now overflow one if they are coming here for the healing please just clear the way for them overflow one overflow two overflow three and the roadside I'll give you a minute those online if you're healed you can you know just just send it as an inbox on our Facebook page or you can find a way to post it I want you to check yourself now within a minute or two the moment you find out that the power of God has touched you make your way some of you you get up under the anointing you find out that the pain there's a lady who has a severe case of bleeding go and check yourself the bleeding is gone gone completely and I'm seeing someone heaviness around the chest is just lifted gone like that please check yourself very quickly and come we may not take all the testimonies but at least let's take a few while we are doing that let me have all the prayer requests very quickly God bless you check yourself quickly Koinonia are you celebrating Jesus the Lord is touching people show them where to come look at look at God touching people already please make your way make your way the power of God has touched you those outside overflow one overflow two clear the way for them just come you can stand on the queue there and let's have one or two testimonies God bless you Koinonia are you celebrating miracles here yeah. Make your way. Be bold. Don't be ashamed. Make your way as soon as the power of God has touched you. Back pain since hold last on, year. Hold on, hold on, just a moment, please. All make sure if 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 your prayer request has not been collected, please. I want you to wave it. Jesus is still healing people. You just come join the queue. God bless you. Yes, please. Back pain since last year. Can you sit for a, a few minutes? Just sit for a few minutes and then we're done. Let's just hear the testimonies. If as you are hearing the testimony, God is still healing people and i want you to make your way and then come to okay go ahead pastor Alpha. my god the... god is still touching people i'm seeing people being touched even in overflow three overflow three check yourself right now and make your way yes please you go mentioned ahead. the case of back pain she's been having the problems this last month back but pain. she's healed now how long come my dear let's have another mic please anytime we're doing this please technically it should be a standard procedure you should know what we're doing please so that we don't delay unnecessarily how long my dear since last month yes in the name of jesus christ 
I decree and declare it never returns again by the power of the Holy Spirit back pain gone forever heaviness in the chest disappeared how long my dear just when you came here in the name of Jesus hold my hands um, I'm seeing someone you had something like a, a growth around your neck check it now you'll be surprised to find out it's gone gone completely gone completely by the power of the Holy Ghost gone completely in Jesus name I declare that every operation of darkness over you is gone in Jesus name give Jesus praise deafness in the left ear since 2012 since 2012 oh come on koinonia how long my friend a man of God told me about it in 2012 and I prayed but I was hearing those B sounds and I don't hear really which of them the left ear. put your hand there now in the name of Jesus it never never returns to you by the power of the Holy Spirit yes also you mentioned also, also how long yes. okay where are you from Kaduna, sir. Kaduna state yes, sir. that's where you are from yes, your state of origin no, biologically. biologically where yeah. are you from I'm from each but I got I mean I'm from state. there's a reason why I said this there's a lot you don't know where you are from there is a long story leave the issue of healing now where eh? I need to pray for you don't feel bad huh look at me where are your parents who are you staying with my mom and my, my stepdad at Kaduna okay it's okay I'll talk to you eh? father help this gentleman because this gentleman is a great gentleman but there is a lot I'm seeing in your life I crush the hand of darkness over your life now and I declare be free in Jesus All, name sir. Koinonia, you are pain. not celebrating. You are so used to miracles in this place. He was feeling the May pain, but you. as you prayed for him, it left. It's gone completely. How long? Since July. July. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord perfect you. Apostle, you mentioned someone with pain at the back. It was her for the past three years. What's your name, my dear? Juliana. Juliana. You mentioned something, the lower... Uh, the the lower back pain. And it affected her left leg also. This pain in Check her back. Check it now. Check it. Check it. Any pain is gone completely. Give Jesus three praise. Years. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, it never returns to you again. Please make sure that we have the request. If you are still yet, if you are still with your own, wave it. Just wave it and an usher will come. Look at that man. And you are sitting quietly there. You wave it and let them know. Pain at the back completely healed. Pain at the back. You fell under the anointing. Ah, see you looking. In the name of Jesus. It's, it's a good baguette, my friend. Huh? If you fall under the anointing, and your destiny arises it's a wise bargain is that true in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare never again in your life the power of god is coming on someone in overflow one overflow one please carry the person and bring the person overflow one the overflow by the roadside Overflow 2, sorry. Overflow 2, I meant to say. Ah, look how powerful the power of God is. I said overflow 1 and nothing happened. I just said overflow 2. Then I now went to say. She's had pain on the left, left shoulder since How long, my dear? Seven. Let her talk. How long? Seven. 2007. You've had what? I've had this pain. It will come and go, come and go. But today it has been intense. But when you mention the case, the pain left. It's gone completely. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Up, down. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will pray, but the person I'm talking about is overflow two. Overflow two. The overflow by the roadside. So you bring the person. The name of Jesus. Perfection for you right now. In Jesus' name. She's had serious um, back pain that back she pain. had to start horse riding so that you can correct. But today they asked you to ride a gone. horse. Yes. Who said you should ride a horse? The doctor? Yeah. Or just advisors? <laughs> don't, don't, she's shy. <laughs> the horse. This is the man. It's amazing how you come for Koinonia minding yourself and you are surprised to see people just carrying you and you are wondering where am I going to? Hi. The anointing. Amazing. 
let me just talk to them and then don't worry do your hosting eh i'm just happy that you are healed so you can go and ride your horse now for fun in the name of jesus you are perfected completely perfected in jesus name i take away this proverb called ikabod over your life and over your family i'm speaking to both of you now from overflow too in the name of jesus i set you free and i decree and declare that that proverb shall no longer be mentioned in your life it will no longer be ikabod in jesus name i'm coming here but you are the one i'm talking to where eh? debbie it's not the this person you hold this one don't worry they'll hold her in the name of jesus the lord is saying he is going to use you to change everything in your family it will be like a dream but he is going to use you he's making you a savior over your family don't ask how it's going to happen is by the anointing the spirit entered me when he speak unto me that god is going to use you and change everything in your family in the name of jesus yes go ahead she's had severe menstrual pain since she started menstruating that resulted in serious back pain how Came old are you now pain this evening sir how old are you now 21 21 and she's had severe menstrual pain yes and she came here with the pain today but the don't pain believe is that thing oh in the name of jesus i cancel it forever amen. say amen. amen by the power of the holy spirit severe menstrual pain goes back to hell in jesus name i pray amen, amen. yes sir. she had headache heaviness in the chest heaviness in the chest okay and then she had severe headache and as she prayed for her it totally and, left. and what hiccup She's... the heaviness used to make her hiccup she was even hiccuping during the service but as you prayed, she's totally healed. God bless you. Look at me. Where did you come from? Kaduna. Kaduna State. You are going back, eh? Where's your mother? She's in Bauchi. When are you going to see her? I'm serving in Kaduna, so it has to be December. December. If I, if I give you an instruction for your mother, will you obey it? Eh? Look for 1,000 Naira recharge card, eh? send it to your mother to bless her and watch what happens in your life you just do what i ask you to do it's not some superstition please you get my point it's just a law of honor that will trigger something i release my faith with you your mother is going to pray one prayer for you that looks like she's playing but you watch what that play will do in your life in she had ulcer peptic ulcer as she prayed for her she was totally peptic healed. ulcer how long put your hand on your chest in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare peptic ulcer goes back to hell in the mighty name of jesus goes to hell forever she also had ulcer but she also had kidney inflammation she used to feel a sharp pain she's been healed of the ulcer now when she presses the place before press she it. Would feel press it press it any pain no pain gone completely no. come on koinonia may god forgive you may god you people have seen signs and wonders too much to a point that God bless you. He had a sharp pain in his left side. Okay. You mentioned it. And then he also used to experience dizziness. That he would just be standing, be dizzy, and then slump. But as you prayed for him, he was totally you healed. just slump like that? Yeah, they may even have to catch it. It happened, it happened once, August, August 26th. You just slumped like that? Yes, I was falling, and then my brother caught me. Come. What if you fall down like the epileptic patient that used to fall inside fire? The devil will just wait until you are crossing a bridge then that wicked spirit will come because he comes to steal to kill and to destroy in jesus name i set you free you are free now you are free forever in jesus name back pain disappeared he's had back pain for a long time back pain sir now. yes in jesus name let it go and go forever never to return again in sometimes the two eyes go blind other times only the right one go blind but now he's totally healed he can see with both eyes have you gone to the hospital for this but sometimes you just go blank like that come in the name of jesus put your hands on your eyes i decree and declare perfection it's not just the bones are what give structures to a person doctors tell us that means that by this miracle god is speaking through it right like he's doing the miracle of Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage 
for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.